All right. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the stream. So, yesterday wasn't a good day. At least not the second half of the day. Um, we lost uh, in, the, in the cup match um, in the second round against uh, Helsingborg's IF, and uh, afterwards we lost against Solentuna. So, uh, the cup match uh, I'm not too concerned about, uh, that's not a problem. Um, we got the money, so that's fine. The match against Solentuna, though, um, a point would have been great, and uh, we've got a match that's no less difficult coming uh, up. The one against Tabby. Sol Solentuna um, really have a good quality of players, and um, I feel Tabby is no different, um, although in Tabby's case, well, um, they don't have the finance to uh, to do it uh, um, every single season, but uh, Tabby certainly have a foreign in the side um, so far. On the other hand, uh, we can be glad that we won against Kolstadt and Vaselons. This, these were two really uh, difficult matches, so in, in that sense, um, we're in a good spot right now. But we, well, from the remaining matches here, um, which is seven, um, we would like to have ten points. That should be doable, but uh, still got to be cautious about it. And uh, I'd have these sooner uh, rather than later, um, if I can decide it. So, hopefully um, we can get them. Now, the match against Tabby is rather close. That's um, because we skipped through, um, the, through the week um, last time we were here. So, um, there's some stuff to do. First of all, we need to look into... Um, what's going on with them. Um, the team selection advice is not that important, but um, we gotta look into um, the data we have on them, if there is any. And uh, Well, there seems to be a tiny bit. Um, they apparently dribble a lot and are infrequently fou fouled. So lots of dribbles obviously is dangerous. Um, We should probably look into the squad at this point and uh, determine why they dribble that much. This is a 442. This doesn't look like much dribbling to me. Maybe it's down to the manager. I'm not sure. He's fairly loyal, controls possession, blah blah. So, um, chances are that. Um, well, this is good dribbling overall and a uh, rather decent pace, but uh, the strength is a bit lacking. Uh, same, uh, let's say similar here, um, even though uh, that strength and jumping reach is uh, really good. So these two overall um, are probably better defended in a standing uh, defensive formation, like uh, dropping to the back and uh, defending them there. And uh, then we have uh, the wingers who are really good dribblers. They are only decent. And uh, I remember Bernard Horace. Not sure if he deserves it, but I remember him. Not very fondly. Same with Tesfai. At, at this point, um, playing a, f a few times in, in the same league, um, you remember a few of the players. Yeah, they have uh, rather decent dribblers. So, um, in, in that sense, this is a problem, uh, if we want to win the ball back. And uh, obviously we want to. But against a 4-4-2, um, this is a rather box standard, uh, we need to go through the middle and um, not care about, uh, about much else. So, we want to counter, the distribution to the flanks is not uh, entirely needed, um, doesn't make much sense here. And um, what I wanted to do, um, now that I think of it, is I wanted to set individual instructions for the different players in this formation. So this might take a bit, but um, some of these players have really bad flair or, and so on. For example, uh, the goalkeeper with a flair of one, um, he shouldn't take uh, that many risks. So taking fewer risks is uh, a no-brainer here. Same for him. And I think Westberg is the same. Yeah, flare free. So none of these should take any risks, right? Um, so we can uh, put that in immediately. 
for both formations actually. Um, taking fewer risks is fine. With the tackles, they don't tackle anyway, and if they do, um, who cares? Um, that one red card in, in in five seasons is not worth the instruction that I feel. If it ever happens, that is. Then there's Ngongo here. So, apparently, he found the access key to his potential. At least it looks that way. Yeah, apparently. So, uh, even though the, the tackling we cannot train, but uh, the marking uh, finally improved a little bit and uh, also some of the other stuff. Hopefully that uh, will remain that way going forward. Um, what's he good at? He's not a good passer. So overall we would like him to retain possession in any formation that is. Um, in the attacking formation as well as uh, in the other one. Um, that or going for the cross. The cross um, is crossing is decent. So we don't need to tell him to cross less often. But uh, we wouldn't want him to cross more often. That's for sure. And uh, given the, those mentals and so on, um, rather a risk-free game would be fine with him. So, he already takes fewer risks though. That's okay. Um, passing directness. In this formation we need some directness of passing, but he's not the one to, to play them. I'm not sure how to do this. How's the dribbling? His dribbling isn't great, but is not... Well, it's not great. How are the others tripling wise Anderson even worse. And then there's uh, Moreira da Silva. Yeah, not good. So overall, uh, we could argue that the dribbling on the, on the right wing, uh, right wing back position isn't great. So tell them to dribble less. The crosses, um, we don't have a target forward or anyone specifically that they need to be instructed for. Um, shorter passing would be an idea, but um, well, this this retains the ball more often apparently. So I think shorter passing is fine here, for all of these. Uh, no matter who plays, there because he's a bad passer, overall, not a good idea to to let him play these uh, penetrating passes. And Moreira da Silva is a decent passer. But um, at this point, with the, with the vision of 4, um, I don't think it's uh, viable for him to play the penetrating balls all too much. So let them play uh, a patient passing game. And the same can be said about these here. Um, probably shoot less often too, because um, really none of them is a good shooter. So we should probably instruct him to shoot as often here too. And um, well, with Anderson, in Anderson's case, we already know that he's bad at everything. Um, and Morara da Silva, long shots free, finishing free. Yeah, don't shoot, don't waste it. Doesn't matter. It's uh, not a viable option. Okay, what else? There's, with Hagedal, fewer risks and Helmstrom, fewer risks is already on. Um, that's good. Is there anything else we can instruct him to do? What are they good at? What are they bad at? Well, we know parts of it. So, passing directness. I feel like they should uh, still do the shorter passing here. And uh, the rest is fine. I don't want them to trigger the press more often or less often. Um... Staying wider once the team has the ball is not a good idea either. Um, it might be an idea for the positive formation, but not here. So here, a wall. Um, we oh, my nose. Um, here, overall, we want them to retain possession, first and foremost, in the defensive formation. This is also true in the, in the attacking formation, though. Um, we don't want them to play the... The penetrating pass. Apparently um, they already pass it shorter here though, so we cannot instruct him to pass even m more shorter. So there's that. Then we've got the left wing back position. Here usually this is a case for Muteba. 
so he's not a really bad passer, but his crossing isn't great. That's a bit of a thing. So let's say shooting less often is a, definitely a no-brainer for him. Dribbling less often is a no-brainer for him. And uh, with the crossing, well, we might need the penetration um, in the positive formation, but not here. So dribbling less is fine and crossing less often is uh, fine too here. Um, They are also, we can also instruct Nagongo with this. Well, no. He's got crossing 8. Or rather, the Silva got crossing 9, and Anderson has uh, crossing 7. So, this is not as bad as it. Uh, again. That UI. Cannot select a player. <laughs> this is wonderful. Uh, let's go to another screen and hopefully it reloads it. No, it doesn't. Fantastic. So, um, in a positive formation, we do not... They, they can uh, take the cross from time to time. In this formation... It depends what we want. But um, really, I think their crossing overall is um, acceptable. It's not great, but um, somebody um, might need to go for the cross from time to time. And um, they cross from deep anyway. So um, these crosses are intended for the, for the midfield, first and foremost. So that's okay. Yeah. Good. Next. What do we have next? Well, um, we did finish Muteba. Um, also in the positive formation. No, we didn't. So, they should dribble less, shoot less often, take fewer risks, because, well, the flare is bad overall. Yeah, four points of flare. And um, who will play on the left uh, wingback from, uh, position? Well, flare free. So, um, this, this is uh, fine overall, this instruction. Melander as well as uh, Eggman have rather decent flair here as a playmaker. So the playmaker is already instructed to... no he isn't. So the playmaker here should take more risks. They have the ability to do this, I think. Um, with a flair of 11 and Eggman has a decent flair too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, flair 10. So that's not great, but um, in our formation this is as, as good as it gets. <laughs> Is there anything else? Well, the passing directness is a bit of a thing. Either we can instruct them to retain possession, first and foremost, or we can instruct them to play the killer ball. Is this uh, viable in both formations? Well, as a register he will uh, take more risks anyway, and passing directness is dictated by... Uh, is dictated by the mentality and in this case uh, we want Melander to take less long shots yeah how's this finishing though finishing five okay <laughs> so we would want him to take less long shots the other uh, an Eggman on the other hand in case he's on um, he's got specific instructions anyway to shoot more often and dribble less or dribble more doesn't make much sense with him. He's um he's a decent dribbler, but not a great one. But a, a register, I think... No, it doesn't run more with the ball, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, anyway, Melander back on the pitch and uh, the instruction's gone. So that's okay. Arsarsson... Well, defensive formation-wise, not much to do. So let's continue with Telander. Takes fewer risks, because he has bad flair, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Shoots more often, that's fine with his, with his finish, same for Warwick. And uh, closes down more, because this is required in the formation. Is there anything else that he needs to be instructed in? Cross less, or, less often or more often, or from deep? We would want him to cross from time to time, so he can vary it. Um, that's okay. 
with Warwick, if Warwick is in this position. Fewer risks shoot more often and close down more. Fewer risks is probably... Uh, gotta look into his stats, right? So, fewer risks with a flare of 5 is decent. Um, also, his passing's bad. Well, I actually feel that less crossing is fine here, too. He's got crossing 6. It will not turn out to be um, to be a good idea for him to cross. Um, shoot more often is decent. Close down more is also good. Um, he just just because we needed uh, for the formation. Um, he's got the stamina, not the work rate, not the aggression. So uh, that's a problem, but we still want him to. So seen from that perspective, um, maybe less crossing is a good idea for him. Like this. Yeah, now if Tilander comes back, he doesn't have these instructions, he can still go for the cross from time to time. In the positive formation, they both cross for the target forward and shoot more often. He's got specific instructions there. Yeah, they can both shoot more often. And also taking fewer risks is still a good idea, both have bad flair. Exactly. Both have bad flair. So um, that's okay. Um, the specific instructions for player are something I should have done a while ago, but um, we do them now and hopefully they can contribute something. Um, the, pr the problem here is that um, the player might be less creative and uh, more predictable going forward. But on the other hand, um, we do them now, so um, the opponent uh, cannot be used to them already. So that's good. Arsarsson needs to play here for the remainder of the season. It's just how it works. Well, that or Ostrom. He should always go for a target forward, take fewer risks as a ball winning midfielder, shoot less often and dribble less. And uh, probably also cross less often. Because really, he's bad at all of these, right? See, he's a ball winning midfielder. So um, let's have a look again at this. Take fewer risks. He has flare 5 and passing 7. Probably good if he retains the ball. Uh, cross less often. Crossing 5. I think that tells everything there is to tell. Cross aim target forward. Well, um, if he ever needs to find anyone, it's probably Ishak or somebody that's a target forward. Dribble less. With dribbling 5, first touch 6. And that flare, probably a good idea. And shoot less often. His long shot is 8. So, um... That's not great, a long shot's 8, but um, his finishing is 4, and overall I don't feel he would uh, would find the situations to shoot. So I'd rather have him pick the, the situations uh, more specifically, and shoot less often does this, if I'm not mistaken. He takes the long shot uh, still, but um, only if it's really viable. And uh, we saw this with Tony Ren, um, I think. Hilberg. Or, well, most of the time this will not be Hilberg, but Forsell. Where's Nila Forsell? He's available for the next match, so he will probably play. Forsell. So, crossing for the target forward is fine with him. Um, what about the rest? He has Flare 6, Vision 7, Passing 8. This doesn't look like somebody to play a penetrating pass. So, take fewer risks. And uh, good morning to you, Conquad. Welcome back to the stream. I've been a bit later today, so uh, <laughs> I've not been that far into the stream. Had to had to do, uh, to do uh, some phone calls. How are you doing? So driven less and shoot less often is probably fine here, and also less crossing. Um, but we need to check this. So his crossing is bad. That's okay. His dribbling is bad. That's okay too. Um, crossing to the target forward is fine. Vision, flare and passing. Well, the passing is okay, but vision and flare aren't good. So I don't expect him to unlock the defense just yet. And their dribbling less is fine too. This is really... <laughs> they are bad at everything. Uh, I, I should rename the, the episode immediately. The bad squad. But um, as long as it works. Whatever. 
We also need to instruct them in a the defensive formation to be just like that. Oh. So we want these instructions here. Basically, do less of everything, right? Uh, the same with Nila for cell. That's a lot of specific instructions, though. Really a lot. Also, roaming from position is... Uh, well, it can, it's something he can do. That's probably the only thing he can do. Because it's his decision-making, anticipation and off-the-ball movement are... Somewhat tolerable, I'd say. So, uh, yeah, he can do that. And then there's Puget out here. So, uh, besides closing down more, which uh, hopefully he can do, um, he's probably a bad crosser. Yes, he is. Um, same as Liliadal, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Liliadal and Mr. Puget are both bad crossers. So, cross less often. And taking fewer risks and shooting less often is probably a good idea too. Yeah, I don't think this is viable for him, and uh, with the risks, he's got Flare 10 though, so the thing with the risks is not appropriate. How is his though? Also 10. Okay, so this is the this is one of the creative outlets of the of the game basically for us. Um, do we want to tell them to take more risks? Probably yes, at this point. These, these can play that one risky pass. So it's either Melander or Puget slash Liliadal. Then either the, the, pass, uh, the risky pass is taken back here or it's out with uh, the left winger. And uh, we should also instruct them here to do that. They are instructed to dribble more. I think both are good dribblers in any way. 11 and 10, he's a really good dribbler. So he should dribble more, but uh, the inverted winger already has that set. So um, that, uh, that's dictated by the role. And then there is, well, cross less often, shoot less often. That's the same here. He should really cross less often, even uh, if he can. And uh, then there is uh, the striker. With the striker, we want him to shoot less often. <laughs> because, uh, well, he's really bad at it. We want him, I think, to dribble less and to take fewer risks. This is the worst striker ever. But, um, he's got, uh, so Flair is six. No, do not try to play the killer ball. Vision and passing are bad. Don't try it, even if it might be a good idea. Finishing five? Don't go for the shot, please. Give it to someone else. Somebody will take it at some point, maybe. And, um, well, what's the, what was the last instruction? Yeah, dribble less. So, same here. Dribbling is 7. Don't dribble. I realized that he scored a wonderful goal after a perfect dribble all over the pitch, but um, don't dribble, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, there's that. And uh, that's probably also true for this formation. For him. When the team has the ball, do we give him freedom of movement or do we want him to hold position? We want him to hold position. We want him to be in the middle of the pitch and as a tar available as a target man once the team has the ball. We want him to outmuscle the opposition, not um, out, uh, outplay it. Because he's no good at it anyway. Okay. <coughs> Is this true for all of uh, both of the formations? Yeah, sure. So now we will uh, need to check these um, going forward. Um, we will need to check these uh, specific instructions on a game-to-game -game basis too. And also other players will need other instructions. But um, we've got a basic sample set here. So that's okay for now. Against Tabby, we already realized that they have um, a decent, um, decent quality in the squad. Um, especially with the dribbling. So I don't want to give him time on the ball um, to run. Um, they can dribble all they want in their half, but um, I don't want them to, to be able to run with the ball um, past our defenders. 
So in that sense, um, also it's an away game. So we'll try to park the bus in that game and hope for the odd goal on the counter. Um, they're also third in the league, so we are definitely not favorites. Um, I do not need three points there as long as we can make uh, get these three points later on. Um, I need one point. Preferably three, obviously, but um, we need a draw. And uh, if we can make more out of it, great. But it uh, doesn't need to be. Okay. So, Tabby's tomorrow. Next. What's up? Well, we skipped through another week. We didn't talk to the players yet. At all. So, let's see. How did they do last game? He's on a 6.5. That's not great. And, um... Last game's performance really wasn't good. We cannot criticize the last game though. Um, overall his form has been decent. Um, it dropped off recently. But it, it might recover um, just fine. So there's no use in uh, warning him just yet. Training rating though, that's not good enough. I'm not concerned about the development, I'm concerned about the training. And um, overall, I think as a as a squad member, he's decent, and we can praise his conduct at this point. So that should improve morale. Great. Next, we should probably go through the entire squad with this. So Nagongo's training and development have been wonderful. Um, the thing is, well, not wonderful, but okay. Um, his training has been good. Um, the development, I wouldn't want to praise him on this, because he considers it tiny, probably. It's just how football manager works. The defensive headers were great. I cannot praise that, though. Tackling was not up to the, a certain standard, but overall, defending was decent. We, I realize that this is stupid, but we conceded too. Um, still, his defending was great. On a 6.9 rating, I don't want to warn him about, about the lack of chances created. Passing has been good. That's uh, more than 80%, right? Maybe we can praise his passing. Okay, he accepts that even if he's not uh, really that convinced that it's uh, that wonderful. We can praise his conduct. And um, how's his form? 6.9. That's not praiseworthy just yet. But um, he can make another appearance. He's he's on medium match low too. Um, that role he will learn in time. Is there anyone else that really needs to come on? Well, not really. So we will we will go with this later on. Um Agidal. 7.8 training rating, yeah, that's not wonderful, but uh, that's good. Um, I cannot praise it anymore, though. Um, we already did, apparently. House is form, 6.96, that's a borderline good. Um, if only he scored the odd goal from time to time, then his form would be also be better. Um, headers won this fantastic last game, so... The impreviousness in the air is always a way to go with Hagedal. And if I look at the amount of yellow cards here, this uh, cer certainly um, warrants a, a praise of conduct. So he's more or less happy. Adam helps Hellstrom. He trends like a beast, like always. His overall form has improved. Um, Apparently last game he had a really great game and then we substituted him off and then uh, we dropped off. So this is a bad decision on our part. But, uh, well, hindsight's a bitch. So, uh, what can we do? 7.3 rating there with uh, 12 headers one. That's wonderful. Definitely one to go for. Um, the thing is, he will probably be on the bench um, this game. Because um, he's under heavy load. And I will also praise his conduct. He doesn't uh, gain that many cards. Anyway, he's on the heavy load. So he will need to 
go off the pitch and uh, somebody else will need to come on um how do we do this well i'll i'll just uh, i'll stumble into him once more right Mutheba, there's the same problem here um training rating is decent his form isn't great though this isn't good enough We are trying to be supportive for now. Last game. Well, we certainly can't praise that. We can praise the tackling, but... Uh, actually, that's a good idea. Let's praise the tackling anyway. But um, he will not be on the pitch. So that immediately says uh, Alp will be on the pitch. And uh, same here probably for Bolligard Blom. Even if I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm not uh, that convinced that this is a good idea. So he has performed okay lately in training, but I'm um, not good. The 6.8 rating here though is okay. Um, he won 100% of his tackles and the passing has been decent too. So it's not his fault that we conceded. Um, tackling is at 100%, let's, so let's go with that. What else? His form is on 6.8. So even though um, some of the fan base and follower base considers him, uh, consider him absurdly blind, I will not go that way. I think um, he's okay-ish. The, the form has been decent for some reason. Is there anything else we can tell him? Well, the development and the training isn't good enough. So... Yeah, he accepts that. And the form is, uh, that's just middle of the road. Not much to tell. If he can keep that form, we will probably be uh, fine for the remainder of the season with him. Now, Boldigord Blom. That's well performed in training, but uh, for his standard, I'm not sure if he uh, would accept the praise. Form, he didn't even play five matches yet. So, no use in uh, praising him. Uh, but he his conduct is wonderful. He didn't complain. Works out fine. And he's a good tutor. So, he deserves a, a place in the squ uh, squad anyway. Um, not for, for the training rating or something. But um, he deserves a, uh, a place in the squad for some uh, at some point. Overall, uh, he, he can be happy, I think. Um, with all of this and uh, th this also allows us to rotate a little bit and uh, maybe ease the pressure um, that's good Melander and Eggman both are on heavy um, load that's a problem but uh, on the other hand this is what we go for so he trained well let's praise him for it his last game's performance was 6.3 so he gets an official warning for that one and uh, this is mainly due to the fact that he didn't create any chances at all. We need him to create the chances. It doesn't work another way. Um, conduct has been wonderful. Not a problem here. And uh, he's fairly pro. So that's alright. Uh, we should also probably teach him to play killer balls. But um, he's too old. At the age of 30 he will not learn anymore. So there's that. Is he part of a mentoring group, though? Yeah, he is. Together with uh, together with Helberg, um, he teaches uh, Puga and Austrian. Um, I'm not sure if it has any effect, but we're trying. Well, um, considering the feedback of the assistant manager, it probably has an effect, but we cannot witness it just yet. Um, we, the only thing we saw uh, so far is that he, this guy is no longer temperamental. So that's the result of our uh, mentoring group so far. Uh, anyway, um, with Melander, there's also really the form is bad. Overall, he doesn't do well. So, um, uh, this doesn't exactly inspire confidence that he needs a place on the pitch, right? Um, well, let's have a look into the uh, match load, though, and the medical uh, assessment. 
So this is... This counts as three matches, but he didn't make the 180 minutes. This is just football manager things. That really... This, this stuff should be fixed. They cannot uh, describe the match load as heavy if he played less than two matches. This is medium to me. It, this is better distributed than medium. So in, in that sense, uh, this this is... I cannot say there's another way. This is bullshit. Um, and if the, if the system um, only counts the times he was on the pitch and not the minutes, the system is bullshit. So I stand by that. Eggman. I mean, that this, this would imply that we can play somebody for three minutes um, as a uh, substitute every single game and they will have heavy match load. He's happy so far. Uh, we wanted to look into the medical report. So he's on a bit of a heavier load. Um, same injury suspicability. So it comes down to um, what they expect. He considers himself an important player. Mm. I do not necessarily disagree. But um, I don't want to pay him the contract just yet for that uh, spot in, in, in the squad as an important player. His training rating has been uh, off though. So um, even though Melander's bad, how's his form? 6.88. It's been spotty. And he's a fairly inconsistent performer and it shows. So even though Melander's form is bad, at least for Melander's form is consistent. With Ekman, we don't know what we get. In that sense, um, I would like to keep uh, Ekman on the on the bench. Um, did we criticize his training? No, we, well, we did. Um, the form is not uh, worth criticizing here. The 6.7 rating here isn't good enough, and he didn't create much. So um, let's criticize that. He wasn't very well involved either. So that will not work overall. His uh, conduct though is okay. Fine. There's this. Now uh, next position. Warwick. Now, as you can already see, this, had, this has a really decent impact on morale, right? Um, we didn't have a bad experience so far and this is in fighting against relegation this stuff is required I don't feel like this is optional Harry Warwick um, will probably not play here um, that's part of our tactical experiment so far um, Telander is available but let's go with Warwick anyway no good training so far His form on 6.56, he scored 0, so let's warn him about that. He isn't playing well though. We will threaten him. I know I'm working on it. Okay. Okay. So hopefully he can uh, score the odd goal going forward. As a substitute maybe. But um, his form hasn't been good. Even even as a non-striker, um, as an inverted winger, he should score one goal each f every five games. That should be possible. This is not good enough. The uh, same goes for Tillander, by the way. But um, Tillander has been better, if I'm not mistaken. He found a way back to um, decent form recently. So, Warwick didn't convince me in training. Also, Tillander's uh, more used to playing that role at this point. 7.2 is uh, something. The 6.2 rating here is no good though. Um, he scored two goals here in, in the match uh, against Vazelons. He won that game single-handedly basically. And uh, looking at this performance overall, um, with, the, with the odd, uh, let's say, 5-7 to seven games now, um, if Talanda plays every single one of them, 
um, he will probably score one or two uh, goals on top. And uh, then we he we will have a normal performance by him um, for this season. So really, August Telando is a reliable, reliable, reliable option. Hell. So that should work out. And uh, well, he contributes uh, what we want him to contribute. Um, hopefully, he 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 can uh, adapt a bit with uh, with the pressure stuff, and uh, with his weaknesses. But the last match, the last match will not do. So, what's the problem here? He didn't create much, right? There's three key passes here, but he didn't create any chances. So we'll criticize that. Okay. This didn't go down well. He worked hard defensively, he says. Uh, to a degree, yes. Form 7.12, that's still okay. There is sirens going on, off outside. Anything going on? Is there... Well, there is no news, so um, I don't know. If they continue to um, be like that for another five minutes, I should probably find out what's going on. But um, it's a bit away. Who knows? Really annoying, though. So it's 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 sirens like uh, you know um, these the sirens uh, from uh, World War Two. So you probably never saw one, um, but it's, it's a siren that sounds like one of these. Like imminent air bombardment. Oh, it's off now. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> you witnessed it. Uh, in case I go up and, uh, in, in, and turn into dust in a second, uh, you know what it was. Okay, um, tell under. So that's all we can, uh, we can tell him for now. Um, the two goals really um, are not praiseworthy um, form wise and the form uh, 7.12 is uh, with with a 7.2 or above um, I usually can can praise their form also on he's on a 6.95 training rating that's not great but it's okay uh, 6.4 in the last game will give him an official warning he had really decent passing though so that's good but um, his defending wasn't great. So we will criticize his defending and he, we will... No, we will criticize the lack of chances created. Because that's always an easy one. With the, with the lack of defending, um, he would probably... Um, well, complain that his tackling has been top. And that's true, his tackling has been top. But, um, yeah. As a ball winning midfielder, he draws the odd yellow card. Um, we will need to play him anyway, but um, he'll he'll probably see the second ban of the season, um, given just uh, what he plays. His conduct isn't its body, I'd say, so that's not really good. And um, his form overall with a with a six point seven is not good enough for the first team. Um, I'll try to criticize this. Yeah, so for the first team, the, the standards are higher. This is one of the things that I um, I noticed in Football Manager. Um, these dialogue options don't mean the same. So um, a good form for the first team should be 7 or above, I think. Um, with a 6.8 or something, um, the, the players will be um, a bit more um, confrontational. But um, if a player is on a 6.6 .6 or a 6.7 form, you can probably criticize them for the form anyway and tell them that the form's not good enough for the first team, well, because they don't warrant uh, a place in the first team, um, other than replacing somebody who's even worse. So, they probably accept that. Forsell didn't play last game, so no use criticizing him for it. Um, his form, 6.88, is decent. The last game he played... That's, that's actually... that's. Oh, yeah, on the cup game he was an unused substitute. That makes sense. 
So um, he was suspended for the league. But um, overall, we can be happy with him. Also with his training. This is good. This is a decent level. So we're fine with this. And then there's Puget out here. He trained well. Didn't play well though. So praising his training. Okay. He considers that hard work. Well, there's another three points um, that he can go up. He didn't create any chances though. So that's definitely noteworthy. Um, his conduct has been decent. Might as well um, praise him on it for now. He's balanced right now, right? Right here. Yeah. And, um... Well, with the form, we cannot tell um, him anything just yet. But um, in this kind of formation, he's a bit of a pacier guy than Lil Yudal is. And Lil Yudal is also an option for the bench, so... We can uh, think about things, let's put it that way. This training performance is not good for Lil Yudal. He's a fairly pro. He was suspended last game. Um, the form is... Okay-ish, but spotty. He, need, he needs to make another game before we can tell him anything. Really. And um, with these training performances, both of them don't look like uh, we need them immediately. So I'm not sure how we want to go about this. Overall, I think Lily Dahl is the better player than Puget, but I might regret that, that decision. And then there's Ishak. With Ishak, well, the training hasn't been good, so let's tell him. His form, 6.88, he didn't score the last games. Um, I don't want to reduce a, a striker to his goal scoring only, though, but... Um, He didn't get a single shot off, so that's not okay. Didn't create chances. He doesn't draw that many yellow cards, this is good. Especially for pressing forward, he's, uh, he has a good conduct. So that's okay. Anton Berg. He trained well. Keep in mind that this guy is confrontational, um, so... Even though he doesn't, uh, he doesn't count as temperamental anymore, his media handling is still um, outspoken, volatile and confrontational. So uh, as long as this persists, um, he will probably uh, not be very happy with whatever we tell him. And sometimes it's better to not tell him anything. That said, um, we can probably praise his conduct at this point. Okay. And uh, the training 7.3, we'll try that too. Okay, he accepts that. Well, um, that's good. Let's go with the keeper here too. He's on a 6.7 Westberg, so that's not good enough. But uh, I'm not too concerned. His performances so far haven't been bad. Um, we can certainly praise the conduct here though. Also, he only conceded one for the remaining 10 minutes uh, against uh, Helsingborgs. Uh, so still better, uh, still a worse ratio than uh, Satterberg, and this uh, seen from that perspective. But uh, yeah, we lost that game <laughs> far earlier. He trained well to a degree. Didn't play last game. What's with Moraira da Silva? Not a good training performance. You need to do better, Sandro. I'm sad to see this. 7.04, yeah, now that now the form drops off um, in accordance with the morale. Now he's just uh, decent recently. So that's still good form, but... Uh, he still wants a new deal for 80 euros a week, I think, at this point. I'm not willing to offer that. He's not good enough for that. Wigberg, oh. 
the everlasting problem with Berg. He's 24 now. We gave him a decent contract. He's an impact sub. I think he will be sold going forward. And that's a. I realized that we never gave him a chance to play the entire season, but um, he had enough um, playing time for us to realize that he will not develop into anything. I think that's that's what's the problem with it. If we look at this uh, overall, he didn't improve. Like he improved in his role, but overall as a player he got worse. This guy's at the end of the line, development-wise, and um, we've uh, endured this for three years. If there was any potential in him, he would probably develop into something, but it doesn't look like it. So um, I'm very sorry uh, towards the real Robin Wickberg, but uh, he will need to go at the end of the season. Um, or at least we will try. Ekman we already dealt with, uh, Skilermo. Yeah, that's the thing with Skilermo. He can certainly play these two positions. I, I, I forgot him previously. But I prefer him to, to be on the bench. Um, passing last game was decent. The rest of it, not so much. Didn't create any chances. And uh, given that he came on, in, he had 30 minutes in the last game to create some chances. He really should do something in this situation. And that form will not be enough. So there's that. His uh, form includes not a single yellow card. This is wonderful conduct. In that sense, he's a very good player. Skilomo. And uh, Kulovic. Well, uh, Kulovic's training has okay, has been okay. He trained well, it says. I'm not so sure. 6.7 rating. He had a few headers. He didn't create that many chances, though. Um, I'm not sure. He, he tried to do his part, I think. There's also a single yellow card against Gefle. Um, I don't think that's really concerning, but I don't want to praise his conduct. His form, though, isn't good enough. That we can tell. He's got one goal. So there's that. The um, thing is, with his, uh, the current state of mind doesn't exactly say uh, I'm a confident striker that uh, will score. So um, he can go off out of the squad for the time being. And now we need to look through the rest. So Lukas Johansson, he's really just an emergency backup at the age of 26 with a short-term contract. Um, if we extend this contract, it will be on an emergency um, backup basis, so we will pay him basically nothing. And uh, we had a, we did a table um, yesterday, um, wage-wise for for the players. Um, in the wage structure, he fits just fine. But um, I will not play him more than the odd game uh, if it's uh, needed. He played once this season. This is an emergency signing. Yeah, you can clearly see it here. Um, we never used him ever since. So that's always a, a bit of uh, also a bit of a problem um, because the player cannot improve. Um, he will decline going forward. Um, I don't think he should improve his the bravery is decent. He should improve the heading though. But overall, um, he's performed okay in training. He's fairly pro. No use uh, talking to him about anything other than maybe the conduct. And uh, the only thing we could warn him about is the training performance. Um, he's determined to prove his worth to the team though. So um, maybe it would be a good idea, given that given Wickberg's recent performances, maybe it would be a good idea to put him on the bench. But um, we also have the Hellstrom option. And the Hellstrom option is much better. Um, so um, I feel like uh, Hellstrom uh, should be on the bench here. Um, yeah, that's better. So in that sense, uh, Johansson will not make an appearance. Um, 
there's no use uh, putting Hagedal on the bench just yet. So left defense defensive side is probably Muteba anyway. Um, there's nobody else available. Stolt is no longer with the club. For he yeah, hasn't been for the entire season. Ekman can be retained there. Um, Korovic is injured. Still out eight days to four weeks, so probably more than four to six weeks because um, this, these kinds of injuries take time to um, to heal over. Um, we don't want to put him on the uh, on the pitch too early. Helberg, mm -hmm. and even if we do, um, he probably doesn't perform. There's no complaints with Helberg so far. Um, training has been good. His form 6.5 will not do. So there is a complaint there. He is certain that he can improve. Well, um, no assists, no goals. Sure, if you think so. Last game he had a wonderful passing. This is this is really good. 6.5 rating, but um, his, his passing is 33 out of 34. Um, he does his job. And uh, it shows here. The improvement in morale. Um, at, at the same time, well, there's nothing to, to criticize anymore. Yeah, apparently this is all there is to it. Okay. Um, so do we want uh, Helberg on the bench? Do we want to favor Helberg uh, over Ekman? Well, he trained well. So even if the performances haven't been great, we cannot uh, we cannot be there and um, help players to playing time that don't train well. That's certainly part of it. Skilomo did train to a degree, all right, but there's a lot of uh, other players here that uh, might take that spot. Ostrom. Ostrom of one of is one of those that deserves a place on the on the bench at least at some point. He didn't complain for the entire tier to season. He's happy with his playing time though, but um, given that training rating, I want to give him the odd minute, if I can. So um, he will be on the bench if I can help it. Puget. Puget has much higher potential, but um, overall I don't think um, he's a good addition and uh, well, Skilomo can do that too. So um, Skilomo brings more flexibility on the bench. Then there's Warwick. Warwick doesn't warrant the plates on the bench just yet. Um, Simply due to the training rating and uh, the form and so on. And then there's uh, Kulovic. Kulovic, I think, needs a rest. Not in a physical sense, but um, he needs to think about uh, his motivations. We already talked about him. And to him, that is. So now, can we look at the loans? Isn't there a loan report somewhere? Development center, maybe. Loans. There it is. We didn't talk to the loan players in a while. Did we? So his this is the average rating for the entire loan though. We've gotta be careful here. His form in the last games there is no aggregate rating here. Six seven six two seven eight seven one six nine. This is okay ish, right? Did he develop into anything? Not really. No use talking to him. Him. That's 6 point something. With the exception of the 7.8. This form is okay too, but not great. Then there's Khalidi here. 6.4, 6.3, 6.9, 6.6, 6.4. Um, we wanna warn him about his performances on loan. He will work hard to improve. Okay. There's Viden. 6960706960. Overall this is this is not good. Um I just realized that um the option here. So we can criticize his loan spell. We are disappointed with the form he is displaying while out on loan. That uh, would imply that it's for the entire loan and not for the last five games. 
so maybe this is different. In that sense, we can criticize them all. Yeah, so these these have bad form, um, and he's on the seven point oh four. Um, this would uh, would be counted as good form, right? But seven point oh four is not good enough. He will work hard to improve. Dobrev, well, he's got transfer arranged now. Do we get any money for him? I'm not sure. Um, we might get the odd euro for him at this point. I already forgot. And there's Orberg. Orberg is just the worst at this point, sadly. He really... Uh, I, j I wanted to say he doesn't belong on a football pitch, but um, that's not fair. He's got good technique and so on, but... Uh, so he needs attention apparently. Why? He doesn't need attention. He needs a kick in the butt probably. And uh, this guy. There's one more thing uh, that uh, we can have a second look on. And this is a player in the U19. To be more precise, it's Waltzund. We offered this striker, who can play as a deep lying forward or as a target forward for us, probably DLF though. Um, we offered him a contract for 200 euros a week. Or even 250. I think it's 250. Yeah, it's 250. Um, and he will not take less. But, um,. So this is a lot of money for us, um, spending 3k on a player just for a few months. The hope is that he will sign another contract for another year afterwards and um, that we will be able to... Oh, we can try that. That's a good idea. We can try that. So let's see if he agrees to an optional extension. No, doesn't want to. So um, this is a short-term signing. And a short-term addition to the squad. Um, hopefully uh, this guy can uh, score the odd goal though. Um, if we employ him. He is a well-rounded striker. That's uh, the best of uh, what we um, have available to us. There is a lot of accepted warnings here. That will not do much. And then we will go into the match. And afterwards I will uh, find food. But uh, we'll do a, another match today, definitely. We don't have the bottle. This is news to me, um, specifically that, that kind of putting it. I don't know what uh, doesn't have the bottle means, but um, who cares? Yeah, let him have it. Are we worried? <laughs> it's not about him, it's about the fact that he plays with, a be uh, with better players. I think this is reasonable, but I, I don't want to um, bash my squad, so it's about the players. This guy is good, yes. Um, Edoras test 5. 
We already noticed him time and time again. Um, the problem with him is uh, we, we need to... I don't know. The, the thing is, he cannot be man-marked out of the game because his off-the-ball movement is too good. And that's really a problem. On the other hand, we've got a ball-winning midfielder that's on his heels, um, probably, or the box-to-box -box this time, so we might stand a chance. With Helberg, um, I'm mainly um, focused on the fact that uh, his contract demands have decreased. He, you might remember that if you're a long-time follower. Um, we signed him for 55 initially um, for the fairly professional personality. He didn't improve ever since, um, at least not uh, in, in a meaningful way. He didn't get worse. He is strictly an emergency backup, but uh, nowadays we only pay him 20 euros. So... Um, that's good. We got him down from uh, 35, and he was at 55 at, uh, at the very start. So, that's okay. Um, as a backup member for that wage he does, um, especially um, given that he's a tutor for us. He mentors uh, in, in one of the groups, and um, that's uh, worthwhile to have around. I would, uh, I would like to have him as a... How do I put this? As a, as a long-lasting squad member. That doesn't necessarily mean that he will be very important on the pitch, but as a long-lasting squad member, this guy's good. And also, look at that flexibility. So even though um, he doesn't perform well, he's a player that can come on the pitch to hold on to the uh, result in most of the times. Who will go down at this point? Hammerby probably. They have a really spotty team this season. Whoever la is last. So um, if we lose this match and everybody else wins, the uh, situation is very, is very different all of a sudden. But, uh, so in, in that sense, we need to win this match. Um. There's a lot of uh, media discussion, apparently. Matthias Nilsson trains well. He might be able to make it into the first team at some point. Well, not really, but uh, he's only 17 years old, so there's that. Um, in the youth team, I think we also need to check the mentoring group from time to time. So he does well. Oh, Felix Gustafsson, 8.3, that's good. All right, uh, youth team, I just told you. Let's have a look. U19 mentoring units, because we have some here. So the thought process here is that uh, Philip Gustafsson, as a highly influential player, mentors the other two. Um, the thing is, these things change a lot. Um, but he's, he's the 18-year-old, so um, that's probably um, due to that. Same here, Nilsson should have an influence as a highly influential player on the other two to increase in professionalism and then we've got a perfectionist here who has an influence on the group he likes the ball played into the feet that's okay for the other ones here too if i'm not mistaken yeah we set it up that way um and none of these is uh, none of these is physically strong all right, so um, even though these two only get a light effect, and uh, the most important thing is that uh, the perfectionist doesn't get an effect. And uh, with um, Robin Eriksson, um, he's driven, 
he gets a significant effect from the group doesn't matter much to me um he, so his drivel will go away probably but he's got determination 15 too so he will not lose much in determination but he might uh, gain some uh, some ambition and professionalism overall i think this is a this is a, an area of the game that is often overlooked uh, often overlooked um mentoring is also important in the youth squad you can uh, make the odd, uh, the odd change there um, to the personal personalities already. You don't have to do it in the first team. So the expectation is that we get defeated. That's it. Try to be competitive. Huh. We will try to be competitive, yes. Sadly, the new striker didn't arrive yet. But uh, maybe we can uh, use him against Harningen. And uh, I feel bad for um, spending that much money. But, um, well, 3000 euros. Oh! So I got a message on the phone. There is a test alert for Bavaria. There is no danger. Further information, blah blah. There it is. Good. Okay. And uh, one of the things I, I dealt with this morning has been resolved, apparently. Um, so, uh, there goes the compliment to my former energy provider. Um, they changed their accounting. After I delivered proof that, uh, well, <laughs> their numbers were wrong. So, uh, yeah. Now I will not need to pay more for something I didn't use. Okay, tactical meeting, yeah, that's fine. We will need to select a team. We already did, I think. Um, this is okay. Hopefully it works out. For next match only, we gotta look at the opposition, though. So, he's weak. That's it. He's weak, but his bravery is decent. Um, he's got good off-the-ball movement, good pace overall. Not sure what to do with this guy. Mark him tightly? Yeah, probably. But a similar argument can be made for this one. In his case, I don't think he will be able to move away from his marker, but he might outmuzzle him from time to time. Also, tight marking. He's Chinese, by the way. How did that happen? Oh. Probably, yeah, he was, he's Chinese, but uh, born in Sweden. Well, is this Taiwan? This is Taiwan, right? So now my, my this stream will be banned in China, don't care. But seriously, this is, this is Taipei, this is, this is Taiwan, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, um, in in that sense, this is a this is a rare occasion. Funny. Anyway, um, so they they've got that guy, and um, we will also try to mark him tightly. But we might not. Uh, we not might not be able to. Um, for them. With the dribbling and all the stuff, I don't think type marking is a good idea. We know that they love to dribble. They dribble a lot. Type marking would mean that uh, we... Well... The off-the-ball off movement is uh, good enough to outrun the marker. Uh, together with the pace. And um, they are not, not that weak. So um, I'd rather close them down. Closing them down, on the other hand, um, he's got weak composure. The long shots are um, a problem, but let's trigger the press on him. 
I seem to remember that we conceded a long shot by Brenner Torres at some point. Um, because he wasn't closed down. We tried to close him down in that situation. They were specifically instructed, instructed they were just too slow. Same here. Um, his passing and vision are, are a threat. But um, we can maybe show him onto the weaker foot. Um, so he will need to go to the inside of the pitch. These two are either further to a degree. Same as with him. With him, the composure isn't that great. And uh, the flair isn't that great. Hopefully, we can uh, force him into a few mistakes by um, closing him down all the time. Tight marking is not a thing. So he's not that tall, but his strength is good. Um, he might be able to out-muscle out his marker, and also um, his off-the-ball movement is good enough. So I'd rather trigger the press on him. And then there's Mats, Mats Freundlich. Um, his off-the-ball movement is... He's really pacey, though. Um, but on the other hand, strength 5 and jumping reach 8, bravery 3, um, this screams tight marking to me. Or an, and AV, maybe even hard tackling, problem is his dribbling is good, so hard tackling is not a good idea. But um, tight marking, definitely. And um, in this situation, so the right one is the one that's tight marked, this means the box to box midfielder. No. Our left player will be forced to to play against Freundlich, and I think this is okay if we um specifically instruct him to, and the same with Asarsson for the other one. So this is not Freundlich, but the other uh, central midfielder. Now Asarsson is the one to close him down all the time, and Forsell is the one to uh, mark um, Freundlich tightly, and uh, given Nilla Forsell's physical uh, constitution, that should be an option. That should be viable. There's also a certain tiredness to um, Mr. Raven. He's a really good one, though. Showing him to the inside would imply that he needs to go with the passing, so this is not a good idea. Um, he's kept at U18 level, I can certainly see why. The thing is... His bravery is lacking, his strength is lacking. We can try to foul him off the pitch, but um, with that dribbling, that's exactly the problem. We would foul him. And uh, closing him down all the time uh, would, uh, at this point, probably result in us um, giving too much space to them. So that's also a problem. So, we, in simply put, we will need to deal with his crosses. Or... Mm, well, just threaten him defensively. Now, to be fair, um, that's uh, August Talander's job, and he might do that job just fine. Zarkovic, right-footed, bad passing, causes composure. So, Flair is horrible, his composure is okay-ish, but his passing is really bad. Um, same with the rest of the technicals. This is uh, worthwhile to trigger the press on. Or and maybe even Menmark. Mikkel Fischer, his passing is a bit better. But uh, same here. Overall, um, this guy might be might be worthwhile to press. And then the Sundgren. He gets forward whenever possible. Sure, let him have that. With Ericsson, he's got a weak foot. So let's force him to play the ball with the left foot if we can. It will not happen that much. And um, he doesn't have great vision passing or flair. So um, no need to... Well, we might trigger the press on him, right? Why not? But um, that will not happen that much. Because um, we defend in our own half. So I'm uh, actually interested in uh, seeing what, what goes on there. He's uh, nervous about the battle with Miguel Sandberg. And he feels unsuited for the role he's played in. Well, seriously.
Let's be aggressive and try to go for revenge. Yeah, that works. Is there anyone here? It's really great that uh, Control A doesn't work anymore to select all the players. That's fantastic. I enjoy taking these boxes every single time. First game of the day. So we are at 25 points. Uh, whatever happens, we will. Not whatever happens, but due to the goal difference, it's highly unlikely that uh, we will end up in the relegation spot. But hopefully, we can get a decent result here. And decent result, uh, at least according to the fans and the chairman, means uh, that we will get defeated, but uh, be competitive. I'd rather not get defeated today. Brennan Torres dribbles with the ball. That was really dangerous. Boldegold Blom with a very long ball. That goes nowhere. Come on guys, you can do better. Let's encourage them immediately. They distribute in a short fashion. You can probably see that Freundlich is, uh, he, he drops very deep. Sundgren. Yeah, we give him, so we, we give him the, the possession on the, in the wide areas of the pitch, basically. And try to cover the middle. Lenarius again. You, you can already see they love to dribble. Telander nearly got it. Sarkovic, Freundlich. There's, there's a lot of uh, a lot of space to cover here. Seriously. Seriously. It counts. This hasn't been offside. You can certainly see that uh, we're trying to close down frontlich and this is... How, how do you defend these goals? Really. Yeah, it's argued out. Or you could you could argue it's Boltegard Blom's fault. He lost his uh, his mark. What a stupid way to concede immediately. Right from the start. That's what we get for instructing the team to play in a, in a certain manner. Melander, Ngongo. Ngongo. Asarsson. Asarsson with the cross. And it doesn't even end up as a corner. Telander wins the ball back in their penalty area. And loses it. Boldegrad Blom. Well done. Asarsson for sell. Forsell lops it towards Telander. And Ravan. Ravan in this. Concedes a corner. Can we get something out of this corner? I'm still annoyed about that goal. Telander, Ishak. Over the goal. It, it counts as a finish, I guess. Raven, Zarkovic, maybe it's Zarkovic, don't know, Fischer, Sundgren, Freundlich, Sandberg, this is a well played passing game overall, Zarkovic, and by the way we instruct the players to, um, to drop deep, they still uh, push up very high, here, Labour, okay, so Leibovic was offside in that situation. 
Raven well done by Hagedal. Here's Shuck with the possession pass for Lilydal and he uh, clears the ball. That's uh, a dubious decision. He should have run with it. Grunborg. He's anxious. Let's encourage them once more. Freundlich with another good ball. And this is one for Leibovic. And the shot deflects of one of the defenders. Probably Boltigard Blum, not sure. Might have been Hagedal. It's no gongo. Anyway. Grunborg, Ngongo, Linarius, and Isha gives away a foul. In this position, really? Aren't they dangerous enough? Grunborg, Ishak. At least he defends it. But overall, oh no, Hagedal. That first touch. With, with these errors in defense. What can you do? Look at this. This was an easy one to defend. Nobody there. Hagedal's first touch is entirely unsuitable for someone on the football pitch. And Grunenberg just picks it up. And uh... Leibovich has not a problem scoring that one. We will demand more now. Maybe it goes down well with them. But um, we don't have any control of the game at this point. Doesn't work that way. 17 minutes into the game and I feel like um, the tactical instructions are entirely off. Well, I, I actually don't think they are entirely off. They are fine. Lilydal with another shot. You, you can see um, in, in a way it mm, would work. If not for the errors in defense. These errors in defense are just too much. And uh, both of them are goals that are entirely avoidable. Asarsson. Asarsson runs with the ball. Lilydal now. Lilydal loses the ball. Well, that was... Uh, he, he adhered to tactical instructions in that sense. Brenner Torres out on the wing. Freundlich. Sandberg. Leibovic. Intercepted, but Brenner Torres would have been offside anyway. It was Leibovic already that was offside. Alright. But two goals down. So we need to change something at some point. It's not like they create many chances now. How do they look physically? Look at this. Raven is already exhausted. Telander, Asasan, Melander. Nagongo. Is this offside? Of course it is. But um, if we want to turn this match around, uh, we got a score over the right wing, probably. And um, these two are already in a... In, in, they have a good game. So um, anyway, we need to score over this, this side. And uh, the counter formation didn't work so far. Um, I'm inclined to change it immediately. But... Uh, This will probably force us into dire circumstances in the back. It's not like we have a choice though. We need to change something. Well intercepted. For Cell. For Cell is not the one to be in that position by the way. 
again, um, this happens due to the fact that um, so football manager is stupid in that sense. Um, I really hate this. So um, football manager doesn't change the set pieces that are pre-instructed um, for the for the other formation. No. If I this is wrong. If I load this though, this routine. Positive corner defending right. That should be the right one. All of a sudden, it is still wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is how it should be. That's Nila for Sarah, yes. This is, this is alright. And uh, on the left side, um, same, really. There's no use complaining about this anyway. Um, who's this? Also, Sonia, that's fine. So, this, this works for me. And attacking corners. This is probably correct, yeah. But um, there's always the odd set piece that is, isn't instructed anymore as you instructed them previously. And then there's also this stuff. So we gave away another chance. Alp. Um, also, we want to focus play down the right. I'm not sure if we want to go for the overlap though. Yishak, Alp again with a cross, Baltigar Blom. And we get a corner. It's something. Oh, giving away two goals like that. Seriously. The one was, was a wonderful pass. Ishak. The goalkeeper actually deflects it. 30 centimeters out or, out or something. He deflects it. Fischer, Freundlich, Grünborg. And there we face another long ball. This is the quality I would have expected uh, for the entire game. Melander, Asasson. This is not a great possession pass. Really. What's he doing? This is offside. Demand more didn't work well, by the way. But we will need to be strict with them at this point. They've been unlucky, but uh, this will not do. So now they're fired up. Um, do we want to do anything to them? Well, obviously I would love to inspire them, but um, how can you do that? With that performance, everybody has been below standard. Or well, below expectation, I'd say. Hagedal with that horrendous first touch. Bultigard Blom with that lapse in defense. That's a yellow card for Bultigard Blom. There's some signal. Some signals are sent here. But uh, Hilberg will make an appearance. I'm probably going forward. Fischer, Zarkovic, look how far they push up. Fischer, not a bad pass, bad defending. Lenarius dribbles with the ball all throughout the pitch. Really, they basically all of them have good dribbling. That's well done. The, the defense, the defense, what's going on, Ishak? Why don't you close him down? He was already there. And this could be offside. Luckily for us, it is. Could have been the third. Do we want to make any changes? We already tried to focus play down the right. Hmm. This doesn't work apparently, so let's try to focus through the middle and uh, overlap on the right side. Um, I realized that um, it probably worked the ball into the box, but more as a defensive measure. Because if you look at it, we are in 39% per possession. Melander, long ball. 
Free kick for Tabby. Oh, that was offside. Okay. Bodyguard Blom with another long ball. Goes into nowhere. Telander wins the ball. Ron should be... Raven should be tired already. What's this? Melander for sell. Oh, come on, for sell. Don't lose the ball like this. And now, Baltigold Blom is not the one to run with Sandberg. He's all on his own. Really, all on his own. Brenner Torres arrives. Grunborg. Well defended by Telander so far. Freundlich. Grunborg. No, it's Sandgren. Well, the shot is on the wrong side. Really. Zetterberg, Baltigord Blom. With the long ball. Is this a lo is this what they, uh, he considers a low risk pass? Well, no, this is though. Oh no, Ishak. How can you not score? So, giving, giving away these chances on, from their side is one of the only reasons we might score a goal here. Hagdal. Well, that or a set piece. Overall, this result is entirely undeserved. They were really lucky, and we've been really unlucky so far. A draw would be well within uh, the, the normal expectations for this game. And now they get... we intercept the ball here, and now he, he, he blows the whistle for, um, for being offside for the opponent's striker. This kind of stuff always happens in Football Manager, but um, I think in, in real life they would uh, play the advantage there. If I'm not entirely mistaken. Because we were in possession and it, it was a situation where we would, uh, could have created a chance. Nobody with Linarius. Some trim with the next shot. Is there anybody willing to come on? To help with this overall situation. So help strength for Bolge Blom. And um, whilst Liliadal is motivated, he's also on the yellow and he doesn't help. So let's get Skildomer on. You can prepare as much as you want in, for these matches. If they give away this kind of stuff. Let's encourage them after um, making substitutions. There's no yellow cards uh, on the pitch again um, anymore. Um, the overlap on the left. Well, on their left defensive side, um, it's, this no longer is uh, strictly needed. Um, they substituted a lot already. Zarkovic <laughs> intercepted by the the, um, the rear side of the of the head by Tillander, but um, they still retain possession. Leibovic, Freundlich, Andreasson, Nagongo, Sandberg, Melander clears it. Last ditch effort to clear it into touch. Seventy seven minutes into the game, not a chance. We don't create any, nothing happens. They just, their passing is too fast for us. That's really all there is to it. They pass the ball around or they dribble with it and they're too fast with it. We don't stand a chance. So we might bring fresh faces on um, to give them some time on the pitch. Ishak is exhausted. I don't think he will uh, score the goal, uh, goal today. So um, let's give the young boy um, some time on the pitch. Even though I don't think uh, that he will make it. <laughs> He's a decent jumper at least. Well, uh, whatever. Let's not, let's not uh, overdo it here. Um, doesn't matter anymore. 
Sure, we would need to to try to score uh, two goals here, but it doesn't look like we can make it. In in fact, quite the opposite. It's more. It looks more like uh, we are prone to concede a third. Look at that passing. What is it? It looked like we were on the counter, and instead we give away another corner, and well, another chance. This passing going forward is really bad. Any long ball would have done. So we've got another substitution to make, if we want to. Muteba or Anderson. Who needs it more? Well, Anderson needs the match practice. It doesn't matter uh, anymore. Get out there, try to make an impact. Who cares? Captain's on the pitch. Alp, Skilermo. Finally a long ball. That ends up with Ostrim. He was offside. That looked close. The left defender was a uh, way out of position. Anderson, Fisher, Flores, Englert. So we had to seriously. We had a chance um, to score a goal at one point, and we gave them basically two goals. These errors in defense. They, pff, I don't know what to do about them. Alp doesn't even win the ball back here. Hellstrom and Assassin exchange passes. This is all good. Not a problem here. The problem is uh, with, with the defense. And this, um, well... Sure. But again, offside. Ostrom's happy to be on the pitch though. But, um... <laughs> that's it. Come on guys, 40 seconds to go. 20 seconds to go. Uh, to lose like this is really frustrating. Melanda with another long ball that's intercepted. Forsberg and Alp loses that duel again. Well, that should be the game. None of them played well. Not a single one of them. Hellstrom is on a 6.9 as a substitute. That's it. The rest of them... Devastating performance. Seriously, look at this. None of these has a decent rating. They all played like crap. And we tried to motivate them uh, prior to the game. We tried to be um, defensively solid and the exact opposite happened. And now we're in 11th place and we can count ourselves lucky that it hasn't been worse. So the match against Harninger we need to win. That's how it is. He's a natural performer in his position that he's already been training for. Great. This was a horrible result and we, t we will tell the press. This is not poor. This is unacceptable. No, I was not half expecting this. <laughs> you 
Yeah, sure, maybe. Why was that particularly impressive, the header? Well, the thinking beyond, uh, behind the tactical approach is uh, that uh, we wanted to avoid conceding two goals, but we did anyway. Tabby is now on a home run, 10 games unbeaten. This could be us. <sighs> okay. So, going forward against Harninge. We need a win. We don't know too much about the squad so far, other than they are all really exhausted. Well, great. But the next match is a home game, so maybe we stand a chance. Also, our new striker might uh, be around for the next game, if I'm not mistaken. How does it work with signing players here? Well, will the transfer go through? I'm not sure how it works with transfer windows here. Um, so usually if it's a free transfer, the player should come in immediately. Um, I'm not sure if it works that way in Sweden though. So hopefully he comes in immediately. Yeah, we signed him for three months, right? So the season ends in, in November. Um, we're in August somewhere. At the end of August. September, yeah, that's exactly how it works. So we should sign him for... Uh, Okay. Apparently we commented too much on the press and uh Yeah. They outplayed us. I agree with that. So for Moraira da Silva there are some offers. He's wanted by three clubs. We've got a we've got a contract extension here. Um, the thing is, Moreira da Silva will not develop in, into anything, and um, he wants a new deal, and we are unwilling to give it to him. On the right defensive side, we got options uh, for the future um, in the club overall. Um, let's just look at the report here. So not Hellstrom, but Nogongo will probably play um, more going forward. Are we willing to go with this guy in the new season? Or into the new season? How is he compared to Moraira da Silva really? Well, entirely different. Gotta be honest here. Um, the defending is, isn't great. Um, he needs to improve by a landslide, defensive-wise. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't care. But the defense, defensive stuff isn't good with him. But he will learn, and he's got the physicals to make up for it to a degree. Um, overall, not great performances compared to Moraira da Silva. Well, Moraira da Silva has been reliable throughout the last seasons. So I've, I'm a bit conflicted here. He was very cheap though, for the entire time. And um, there's other stuff uh, to consider. There's not only Monogongo. So this is what's uh, in the squad right now. But um, we've got, where is it? The loans. Bengtsson is an inverted winger, but uh, Burntson, I think, yeah. Burns on here as a defender on the right side. And if you look at this, this is on a similar level as uh, Ngongo. 
there is no reason not to include this player in the squad in the next season. He plays well with Stockson. He can he can probably be around the squad. Khalili is still around, in case we need him, for whatever reason. Doesn't have a wonderful season. Doesn't ha didn't have a bad season with us as a last ditch uh, replacement. And uh, Vorolin is a central midfielder. Augustson is a central midfielder. Or Burke is uh, <laughs> he will get released, I think. Um, oh no. We'll still have him on contract for another season, so uh, he will not get released, and uh, Dobrev will be all out. But um, we've got another option on uh, on right uh, wing back, so at this point I'm willing to part with Da Silva on a free. Doesn't matter, just get rid of him. So that's that business. Hopefully we can celebrate a new signing, even uh, if it m it might only be short term though. Um, uh, let's see. But uh, I'm willing to to part with the wage structure um, for that striker, and uh, hopefully he can make an appearance against uh, Hunting immediately. I'm I'm not even gonna talk about it anymore. Doesn't it doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't work um, with these two arrows in defense. There's nothing you can do. And if you can imagine something, uh, please tell me. But um, with that kind of defending, sure we could have played another defender. So maybe the first error um, by by Bulldogard Blom, maybe that error was avoidable. But on the other hand, really, in Hellstrom in that position has had errors in defense throughout the entire season. So for him not to to be able to do something like this, um, that's just fantasy. They they both uh, bring that to the table from time to time, sadly. And uh, with um, with Hellstrom, um, it's uh, the lack of marking and uh, the lack of composure. And with uh, Boldigold Blom, it's the lack of composure and uh, the lack of uh, acceleration of pace. So. We need a better central defender in this position. But Hellstrom is basically the best we have. Really. This is this is all we can do. So uh Yeah. Good luck with that. Alright, scouting report for Haninge comes up next. So, I will go on a five minute break to get some food from the kitchen, um, which uh, should be available uh, following yesterday's cooking. So, I'll be back in a minute, or five, and uh, then we will look into Haninge and uh, we will see if we can uh, salvage something out of the season. I do not want to go down.
I found food. Okay, let's have a look at this. So they play with a cautious mentality. I'm playing away. Yeah, this is with us. So we face a cautious mentality. And um, they still go with a gate and press style though. Cautious gate and pressing. Well, uh, interesting. But uh, apparently it's possible. And we have absolutely no idea about any of this. Pausing. They play fewer passes and it's very inaccurate. So um, they need to work to get the ball back. Um, basically any time, if I'm not mistaken. Apparently we have uh, fewer passes, but accurate passing, at least, so, um, <laughs> interesting. We are <laughs> last in that segment of a plus con uh, pass completion ratio. In other news, we are strictly, well, the goals per game is where we lack the most, right? Even non-penalty expected goals, they are uh, they are better for the entirety of the league. So in that sense, um, the striker is really missing. Or somebody up front that creates. And the team defending stats are just horrible if you look at this. Our interceptions per game are the worst. Seriously, the worst. In the entire league. This will not work going forward. We need to improve that side of the game. I think this is uh, one of one of these things uh, where, up until recently, uh, Turgren and uh, Oliver Swan um, were able to um, to contribute more. Um, but this season they are missing and. Uh, we can certainly see that. By the way, we could sell us, uh, the claws for Oliver Swan. Do we want to though? Not really. We are now in a position where um, that that clause is uh, we we can uh, keep it on and uh, look if it earns us more or nothing because we are in a comfortable position that we have the money. So we can stick with it for now. I feel like um, selling these clauses is akin to buying insurance because you don't know if the player will develop into uh, something worthwhile and will be sold. So selling the clause will always be uh, to the... Well, well it no, it, the outcome will not always be in the favor of the selling club or in the buying club, but um, the conditions will always be in favor of the, of the claw, uh, club that sells the clause. No, the other way around. The, the club that is no longer forced to, to have the 50% um, uh, Democles uh, sword above him um, or above them 
that club uh, will always have the better option here. Because uh, they wouldn't uh, sell the clause if they wouldn't think it was cheaper. They would just uh, stick with the clause then. To lose like that, two entirely avoidable goals, like any of the uh, the other ones, okay. Um, there were shots in there that were, I don't know, there were there were dribblings in there that were really great. That the, but these two goals against Tabby, so bad. And also that one, uh, that one chance by Ishak, where we intercept, uh, he intercepts the ball and uh, goes for the shot and just immediately, um, well, passes it towards the keeper. You cannot score a goal like this in this division. And you cannot win games like this in this division at all. And on one side, I really do not want to um, to spend 80k on uh, players and player sales. But on the other hand, I want to push them a little bit to have better quality in the squad. Hopefully that striker finally makes a decision. Wol Wolm Wolmström or something. I forgot. Wolmade. I, I will need to have a look. Westberg is a backup. Um, yeah, I think this is viable going forward. We will probably either trigger the clause or um, try to get a new contract going with him. Um, given the financial circumstances of the club, new contract is probably a bad idea because you will want uh, more money. So Ishak Augustson doesn't really improve. He's spirited though. Either we sell him immediately or we give him another year out on loan. He's open to talk to other clubs. Maybe FC Goody would want to offer, um, I don't know, two and a half K. I don't think he's worth much more than that. I will not transfer list him. I'll just offer him to, to the club. And try to find out uh, if they want him. He's not good enough. But as I said, as an emergency backup, he probably will do. He's also fairly pro. Um, if we can get him for cheaper, 
As an emergency backup, sure, why not? Yeah, that's basically your role, this is fine. And uh, even at a reduced wage. So, we'll try to go with 6 here. That's probably a bit low, but um, if we can make it work, why not? Okay, how about 7? You get 7 of 9. Okay, he went down to 8. Really, we can leave the clauses in, doesn't matter. Fine, you can get the 8, but you get nothing else. That's still uh, for, for a backup member. Um, of that, the quality I don't think is uh, down to down to player skill. The quality really is the personality at this point. We're trying to um, to get a professional player into the squad. Um, he's a emergency backup that is just good for general training and uh, team atmosphere as a pro. And uh, we basically halved his uh, wage, so that's okay. Um, he's he's here for the mentoring. Actually, does he do any mentoring? I do not think he does, but is there any central defender that is young enough? Hellstrom has decent traits. Johansson could make a group with him. He could profit off these traits. And uh, then there's Boltyloid Blum, so why not? Uh, we can open a, a central defenders group. They will not influence uh, each other. But, um, well, they, they will not influence each other in, in with respect to personality, but uh, they are all um, fairly pro. Um, all of these. Oh, well, he gets a signif significant effect, but he's uh, fairly professional and so are they. So hopefully um, this is a positive effect. Who cares? Um, and they get no effect from him. But um, they still might, I don't know how it works with the traits, they still might adapt one of the traits. And then there's the other ones, well, Hargidan and Wickberg, we will just include them for funsies here. Oh. So Wickberg still has a light influence um, by them. Uh, no, Hargidal. And uh, Wickberg, there's an average influence. Um, so overall, this uh, should move the needle a bit more towards professionalism, maybe. It's not entirely clear at this point, but maybe it does. And uh, none of them has a trait that I do not want on the other ones. Um, staying back at all times and avoid, avoid using the weaker foot is uh, generally a good idea for a central defender. Um, they're all technically not that capable, so that's okay. I can, I can live with that, that's fine. So, Augustson we just offered. Alexander Westberg I think we can keep as a keeper. Um, we will keep him as an emergency backup though. Okay, so he wants to be backup, who cares. 8 euros per week is less than he earns right now. Um, he's at 10 right now, so that's perfectly fine. But uh, we'll try to negotiate for 6 and uh, probably end uh, with 7. Yeah, already. So he wants a 7, fine. We'll remove the rest. Don't care about the clause going forward. Um, he has no market value, uh, apparently. Um, that's still down to the fact that he's already 24. So, um, this is what we're going for. And uh, now, for both of them, uh, we should probably include Claws going forward, if we can. He's fine with that. 
Do we want an automatic extension after a certain amount of games? Sure. If he plays 15 games, he might as well extend his contract, right? I don't think that this will happen. So, um, not a big deal. And then, uh, relegation wage drop in case we get relegated. Never forget that one. And, uh, Westberg. Here, similar things. If he makes 15 games, he might as well... He's half-time keeper at that point. He would accept that one too, and the relegation wage drop maybe. Sure, that's it. So, that's good. Now, with Westberg, we also... Um, so, he's on 7 euros per week now. If we can offer him something like this. 6 euros per week, but an appearance fee. This would be the equivalent. We will offer him more. Let's offer him 9 euros and see if it works. Because in that case, um, he would just sit on the bench uh, all, all uh, season anyway. And um, this would be cheaper overall for us. No, he doesn't want that. Okay, he wants the guaranteed wage. Fine. About that 1 euro a week. Seriously, whatever. Kulovic. He's on 6 euros a week. He's 24 right now. He's a backup. To me, he's a backup. At this point, he will not develop into anything, and uh, he lost his fairly professional personality. Um, he made a tiny jump um, at one point. But as you can see, well, he trains as a target forward. He, he never quite made it. It's really sad, but he never quite made it. And um, given the the mental sample, um, he he might have made it at some point, but overall there's stuff missing here, and he's 24 now, so um, that's not the end of the line for him. But uh, I don't think he'll make it. On six euros a week with a two two year extension, um, we can probably go for another contract. As an emergency backup is fine. Yes. Um, on the other hand, um, he's. He doesn't bring a good personality to the, the table. We know that this is a previously... Uh, previously he was considered a, a fairly pro. Any trades? Not at all. So for 6 euros a week for another year? Sure. He wants 10 though. But um, he would need to uh, play as an emergency backup and 10 is a bit much. He's consistent. Consistently bad. But... Uh, Well, for strikers, you know how it is. Strikers are expensive. He can have his fees here. I don't care. This one, though, not at all. He's pleased that we almost have a deal. Okay, let's go with 8. Oh. That's uh, not enough for him. Okay, so he rejected it. Eric Viden. So with Eric Viden, I think we will part. We've got an extension clause, though, so we might as well extend. We we might extend it for another year, but um, given that he's open to talk to other clubs, if we can, I don't know, get two K out of him. That's perfectly fine with me. Sell on clause is not that important here. But I would be happy to part with him. There's uh, staff contracts that are uh, bound to expire. Berquist. Um, he's got Physiotherapy 6, yes. So this is not needed. And our goalkeeping coach is so bad that um, we don't need to keep him around the club. Um, anyone else can do this. Um, the only contribution he brings to the club is uh, scouting knowledge in Norway, and we don't need that. Also, um, training coaches. I wanted to look into this at some point, because we fired somebody, if I'm not mistaken. Head physio. This uh, help helps out with goalkeeping coaching.
care. <laughs> That's down to the mental still. Um, he 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 is on uh, of no use there. Um. So um, we were going for two star coaching everywhere, right? This is the target. Let's remove it all and uh, see where we go. So this is bad. I will not uh, with the the manager um, himself. I will not do goalkeeping coaching. Definitely not, and I will not do the rest. What am I good at? Let's do it the other way around. What are they good at? So, the assistant manager really is a good coach overall, um, but uh, we have nobody else to do fitness coaching, if I'm not mistaken. This is seven. This is... This is worse. So he needs to do the fitness coaching. No big deal. He he can do that. But um, he will not be available for the rest. Which is bad. Then we have a goalkeeping coach. Because, um, well, there's nobody else around that can do it in a better fashion. Actually, well, we'll see going forward. Nesting. Nesting is... Uh, this is bonkers. Is there attacking and mental? No, there isn't. But, um... So that's okay. He can do these two. But uh, not much more. Mulk's rent can do one category, probably not a second. Due to um, not being able um, to cope with them both, to to have them in uh, on a on a two star level, and then the rest, well, the head physio will not help out much. Uh, it's, it's just that this is a bonus job to relieve the stress um, of the free players for Kiva Aegis Cork, and uh, the rest of it really needs to be done with the, uh, by the manager. So now we have two categories where there's one and a half star training. No, it doesn't help. Um, so manager needs to be better. That's it. But if we hire another coach, it's probably for defending. Yeah, so it's we need a defending coach. We've got another slot there. It's not a problem. The problem is to find somebody that's viable, that is willing to work for us for that wage. So uh, let's go into another staff search ad adventure. We are looking for a coach. And we are looking for a coach that is good at defending. There's only 12 people found. Daniel Pereira. Can you remember this guy? I cannot. His defending coaching would be acceptable, yes. Is there anyone in here with a good personality? Where's, by the way, where's defending? Okay, let's start it by this. So, um... Peter Christian uh, Singas is definitely the best of them all. Um, simply, this is great overall. In fact, this is probably a very good coaching. Uh, I think there was a good coach star calculator somewhere. This might be it. Let's see, so this is attacking 7. Tactical is 5, defending is 12, technical is 6. Fitness coaching is 4, determination is 14, goalkeepers is... This is an old one. Goalkeepers is 1 anyway. 
Level of discipline is 10. Mental coaching is 5. And motivating is 9. That brings us to... Defending coaching of 3 stars. Um, overall... There's a good calculator here, but um, what really annoys me is that uh, they do not... Oh, we can rearrange this. Well, this is a decent calculator in that sense. Attacking, defending, fitness, mental, tactical, technical. Distribution. Handling and shot stopping. That's better. So uh, these these calculators on the internet they all have uh, all have the attributes in uh, a random order. It's all over the place usually. So now we can just no this one is not tappable. Oh. Yeah, this is this is really a deficit of uh, of the stuff on the internet. It's low quality overall. Should probably do one myself at some point. Technical five. Technical six. And then we have one, 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 fourteen, ten, nine. So yeah, um, for for defending coaching, this is definitely three star. Um, tactical as well as uh, technical, um, defending. So he would be good. He would be three hundred and twenty-five euros. Good. Great that we had that talk. Thank you very much. Daniel Pereira, probably the same problem. Um, let me check just for a second. He should be fine as a defending coach. Mental 6. Tactical 9. Technical 6. Goalkeeper stuff doesn't matter. And that's 6, 10, 8. He is still considered a uh, Two and a half star coach for defending and for attacking purposes. So that means uh, with two two coaching categories, he's probably still two star. But um, for that money, I'm not willing to sign him. That's too expensive. What contract is he on? On a very low one. He is ambitious though, so I will go with 190. No, he wants to be U19 manager too. Um, gear nesting. He's already a coach with us. Well, that doesn't help. Um, sure, he can do defending coaching, but not at the same time with his other duties. This guy, he has a low-grade contract. Um, as a coach in the defending area, this is borderline viable. He might be he might be a viable option for one of the trainings. So if he's really cheap, he isn't. 85 is too much. He's jovial. Um, overall coaching looks decent. This is not great, but it's okay. 240 though, not willing to go there. And one of them will be, um, maybe not one of these, but at one point one coach will be viable as an option. Um, this doesn't look good. He's got a national B license, but uh, the mentals are, um, the level of discipline is great. And he would be willing to go with a U19 coaching role. So um, we gotta look into this guy um, in, into more detail. Not for the U19 coaching role, but um, because we can offer him a contract for 25 or something as a, as a real coach and can try that. So uh, I will slam this into the calculator for a second and uh, see how his uh, coaching rating really is. 5, 6 and then there's 9... 16 and uh, 6 point of motivating 
Okay, so if he ever gets an additional point in defending, an additional point in determination, level of discipline or motivating, all of a sudden he's two and a half star material. For some areas, that is. So he's not great, but he's dirt cheap if he um, accepts to another contract. So I will offer him a contract as a coach. Um, long term. Well, let's not do long term just yet. Um, also for 15. And we will see um, if he changes his uh, behavior. Probably he says this is way too low. But if he wants 30 afterwards, um, that's okay. We can also take that. No, he thinks this is reasonable, actually. So, um, it's all about the weight raise now. Um, for promotion. And at this point, we'll go with a, a two-year contract. And that's it. Perfect. So, um, he's not great, but he can do two and a half start uh, training. That's an option. Is there somebody that's better? He's a physio. And that's... Uh, altogether, that doesn't look much better um, as a coach. It's not worse, though. 20. Well, it is. Um, the, the mentals look worse. Um, he's had physio with them. He's uh, too expensive, probably. Yeah. Not interested. Eric Ter. Fairly loyal. Would do in a coaching role. He's on 10 euros a week. Is there... How, many, how much coaching stuff is there? That we can employ? I think we're at the, at the end of it, right? Um, we have... Where is it? Oh, it's somewhere here. Yeah, we've got space for one uh, one more coach. On the other hand, um, if we can get a coach for the goalkeeping area, that would be wonderful, but you might remember that this is uh, very difficult to get. He's not a good goalkeeping coach anyway. So I'll still try to offer him a contract, just because, not him, the other guy, just because I can. I want to see if we can uh, negotiate a cheaper deal with him. Definitely not. And uh, then there's uh, the crap here. I take that back. This is great. How how does it go down though? Um, if we slap this into the calculator, mental coaching for um, tactical five, technical one. Uh, this is bad. Yeah, so this guy, believe it or not, this guy is a two and a half star coach in tactical defending. And that's because his mentals are really good. So, um, he has national C license, so he's, he's licensed, but uh, not to a high degree, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he wants too much money. Okay. What about him, just for fun? Nah, 65 is still too expensive. The, did we talk to him just now? We already did, okay. Um, so let's try to go for um, a goalkeeping coach too. Um, you might realize that we've been looking for a goalkeeping coach for a long time. And we didn't find anyone that's uh, worthwhile. There, there's nobody avail available. Well, great. This is our own coach to... well. So what's the problem with goalkeeping? Oh, it's not this. Um, if we look for anyone, we get some. Well, we had some. This is what we have in options uh, for goalkeeping coaches. They are borderline viable. He's balanced, that's okay, so we should probably sort it by this. He wants to be a manager though. Um, not sure if I want to employ him as a manager. 
As a goalkeeping coach, he would be wonderful. But um, he's got other options, so that will not work. Bjorn Deglum. Well. Is one of these any better? It's it's really... It's about the... Uh, about the willingness to sign for us for that money, after all. So this will not work. This doesn't work. Keep in mind, we're, we're trying to hire a coach for free players, right? And, um... Emin Nilsson... No. That's... N that's not okay. I will not do that, no. Also, we would need to pay compensation, so definitely not. Let's uh, reduce our requirements a little bit and then... Uh, hope that we find somebody else. He wants to be director of football. And uh, will not uh, do goalkeeping coaching anymore. That's uh, sad. Wants to be a scout. Okay, whatever. We've looked at him, we've looked at him. This guy's new. Um, I think we've already been here. As an assistant manager, he's also too expensive, so no. Svante Hamar, fairly pro. This would look... This might uh, be able to do a two-star category, but no. Emil Nilsson we talked to just recently. He wants 100 euros, so no. Um, this guy's fairly pro too. Very interesting and absolutely unpayable for us. I think I encountered that name previously. 500 euros a week, yeah, that'll be the day. That will pay that to somebody. 180, too expensive. And stream. 200, too expensive. Tim Svensson, sporting. Too expensive. So we need to go down with the requirements. And at this point, this is not about good coaching. This is about one and a half star and hopefully hope for somebody. And I think we did that yesterday. We were, all, oh, we were already here looking for a goalkeeping. This is better. But he's really crap. Now, um... What role was this? U19 goalkeeping coach. Well, um, he would he might be able to adapt to it though. Um, to the. We might get him as a coach for for the upper, um, compartment, uh, whatever for the for the first team. So this is our current goalkeeping coach. Let's compare the two. Those are pest and cholera. Is it is it pest? No, it's it's a plague and cholera. We say in, in in German. I'm not sure if this is a thing in uh, in English anyway. So our current one. What am I doing? I'm stupid. Sorry. This is overall goalkeeping coaching exactly. So the current one has better mantles. That's it, and these mantles um are good for. They make up for the difference. That's the thing. Um, I will still uh, slap this guy into into the goalkeeping coaching calculator, but um, I don't think he's worth it. Mental coaching is free. Not that it matters. And uh, he's four twelve four. So, um, goalkeeping coaching, he's one and a half star each. Um, that's alright. But um, in that sense, he's the same as our current coach. Because this guy has one and a half stars too. If we put him to one category. The problem is uh, that he needs to coach both. And uh, we need a coach that has a two star. At least in, in one category. Otherwise, it's not worth it. So, whilst this is okay... Um, he we would need another goalkeeping coach, and um, the board doesn't want us to have one, so no deal. We should we should ask the board at this point if we can have another coach, um, because another coach would be able to, we would be willing to go with this. Well, 
I'd also go with another U19 coach, really. Um, if we can find better, per well, if we can distribute their duties um, in a better fashion, then uh, cheap stuff will suffice. So the count of coaches is uh, perfectly acceptable um, to increase, as long as we don't increase the wage too much. But um, this is not what the chairman thinks. The chairman thinks we will uh, we will try to um, employ another coach for 500 euros a week. So um, they usually don't accept it. On the other hand, we've got some money on our hands. So maybe it works. Changing personnel in the middle of the season. Great. Apparently, uh, my CPU uh, does some hard work here. Um, not sure what's going on. But the goalkeeping coach thing is um, important, I think. Um, if we could get Sederberg to do it at some point, that would be wonderful. Well, I'm not sure what happens here. Maybe the new gens are generated. I'm not sure. Um, this might this might be the day, so um, I will need to rerun uh, <laughs> uh, the face pack, uh, the generator there. But um, yeah, it might be that this is the case now. We will see soon enough. Um, the youth intake apparently is really crappy, though. So. that or the computer finally goes down the drain well finally is not a not a, a <laughs> correct word in this situation but uh, it certainly feels like it I'm not sure what's going on, other than uh, me, needing, me uh, needing new hardware, which is uh, on the way. <laughs> At least uh, I see it in in the distance, at the horizon. Uh, probably uh, at the middle of the year, somewhere. Maybe uh, I can finally spend on hardware.
Finally! There we go. Hopefully this is something important, but uh, it, it might just be new gens. Um, we'll need to look. That said, if it is uh, the the new gens, uh, maybe they are also um, generated in in England. That would be great, and uh, hopefully we can uh, poach the odd uh, new gen from England. English players are what we're going for, after all. So, anyone around has got any comments, uh, any recommendations, something, stuff we should do? The number of coaches for the U19 got increased, so we can have another U19 coach. That's good, I guess. Uh, great. It's I would rather have had uh, another coach for another area, but sure. So, it's probably the same here. Actually, it's here it's better, is it? Because the U19 manager is really great. He's good. Not at everything, but, but at a lot of things. Fitness coaching, though... Fitness coaching, though, is a problem. Yeah, there's a problem here, too. So he can't do fitness coaching, but it's really a waste. This he's good at. This he's good at, too. Can he do another two-star? Is there a nine? This is, this is better. So he can do four categories and still be a two-star coach. This is wonderful. Now, um, we can't even do one that's uh, appropriate, and not two at all. He's a U19 coach, he can do this one though. He can be with that, now we can do a uh, tactical possession ourselves, or oh, it's tactical attacking. Anyway, um, we can do that ourselves, and now we have the problem with the Well, really just this. Um, we need a fitness coach. And fitness coaches don't exist. Um, not on this planet. So it's either a fitness coach or a goalkeeping coach that uh, needs to improve here. Our general goalkeeping coach uh, already does a U19 goalkeeping coaching. So um, in that sense, stuff we had last time. Where's the bad goalkeeping coach that was willing to sign for us? That would be an idea, or the alternative is to go for a fitness coach and hopefully find one that uh, will be able to... By the way, that menu didn't get fixed. Just just for funsies. Strength and quickness training do no longer have different uh, fitness coaching attributes that got removed, so this drop down wasn't adapted. Sometimes I ask myself what the UI designers at uh, Sports Interactive do. But uh, okay.
So, him for example, so the directors of football I don't think we need to look into. Um, him, he would be a decent fitness coach or overall coach, but uh, he's too expensive. We're talking U19 level now. I think you can... Uh... There we go, nobody interested. And here we have one. We should do it like that every time. So okay, um, he is a coach with uh, Nor, whatever it is. We remember him, right? Yeah. He wants to be a manager though. I'm for the new 19. So that's not viable. We want a fitness coach. Here's fitness coaching. He wants to be manager too. Probably for the U19. Sure. Well, he wants to be assistant manager. We do not have a U19 assistant manager, but he's too expensive for that. That's the problem. In fact, I, he probably isn't too expensive, but I'm not willing to pay it. Um, Gilbertson. Not bad. Not bad. Amateur contract. And this is wonderful if he goes for assistant manager. If we can get him to be assistant manager for us, which he might, um, his coaching attributes are... This is fantastic. Well, slap this into the calculator for a second, but um, this is good. And uh, even though he will do defending coaching with us, um, and not defending, um, fitness coaching. Tactical is 8, and this is 7. 3, 5, 2. No, seriously, the mentals are what uh, what's best at, uh, with him. So um, he's a two-star coach for fitness coaching, even. Just because um, because his mentals are that good. So if we can get him to be a coach or an assistant manager, we're totally fine with it. And we do not have a U19 assistant manager right now. I will look into this, just to be sure. But I don't think we have one. U19 has a manager and a coach. No assistant manager. This is a performance analyst, but no assistant manager. So if we can get him to be assistant manager in the U19, that's wonderful. I'd even... Well, let's remove this. He wants to be manager under any circumstance. Come on, man. And now we will need to throw money at him, to a degree. Get rid of this. Look at that. So, um, we gave him f 5 euros a week more, and uh, he's willing to sign for the U19 as, a, as an assistant manager. Okay, that relegation wedge drop was too much, but um, we can probably go back to it. I think assistant manager counts as a coaching role though, so that's all we can do here. Okay, it's seriously only about 50% here. 45 is fine. Okay. Um... So that works out for us. Um, U19, where's the stuff? Overview here. Yeah, there's no specific. Um, there's no specific area for an assistant manager here. Well, it is. It's part of the coaches. So um, getting uh, another coach in here would be totally fine. They don't think uh, they need a, a separate physio.
we're going with really cheap uh, stuff overall though so um that should improve uh, training training performance too and uh, coaching overall Seven messengers. All right. Max Olson is the best attacker. And the worst team in attack is uh, Urubor, uh, bro. We've got a few important dates in September. He appears to be more ambitious and a little more controversial. Okay, whatever. Ambition is a good thing, I guess. And he lost in determination, but uh, gained a bit of loyalty. That's not what I was hoping for, though. What mentoring group is this? Here. We want him to be fairly pro didn't work okay so uh yeah what can you do though what can you do wickberg on a 6.1 rating seriously how? Why? We will play Hunting and Urbro. The next two matches basically decide if uh, this is a relegation scrap or if we can uh, forget about relegation going forward. Because it uh, it gets highly unlikely. Or something in between really. Um, for example, if we draw both of the matches, we are not out of the danger just yet. But um, if we win one of them, or um, both, we're in a decent position. And we'll probably make it. I really hope we get the signing in and uh, that he performs in the, in the next seven matches immediately. That guy looks like he's too good uh, for our, uh, for us, though, so it might be a problem to extend his contract afterwards. But, uh, I didn't want to offer uh, 250 euros a week. So they are pleased overall. Um, oh, they want to extend our contract? Yes, sure, we want to do that. We believe it's important to stay on good terms with you. <laughs> sure. I mean, I didn't uh, I didn't call for one, but yeah. And uh, this is one of the weird things in football manager too. Um if you if you get a big contract now, um, they are less likely to fire you because it costs a lot of money but on the other hand that big contract will ruin the club financially so it's at your own detriment because um, it makes your management that much harder so what a, well obviously in real life you would go for the best contract you can get because um, well money 
and uh, you're not doing it for the club, you're doing it for yourself. Whilst um, being, well, doing it for the club is also good uh, in, in real life. Uh, being underpaid is just another way to phrase that you are exploited. Even if you do what you love. Doesn't matter. Don't let anyone exploit you. But... In that case here, um, we will probably go with an underpaid contract. There's a lot going on. At least for the PC that seems. There it is. So the monthly performance is good. Um, that's why we are offered a new contract. But why is that? Why are they happy with us? Because they think we will avoid the relegation um, this season. And really that's all the ambition they have. This is good um, overall. So the five year plan is to remain in the league. That's okay. I can deal with that. If we push for more, that's fine. But um, uh, to be competitive in the Swedish uh, Cup is also good. Um, this earns us money. What I'm more concerned about is the match performance. So yeah, we can. They, they think uh, we we should. Uh, uh, we should draw against Harninge, but with Tabby, they are moderately satisfied. Because this is a bigger team, and overall we lost it, but um, we did our best. I'm really sad by uh, saddened by that result, though. And uh, Sol and Tuna, they also count as a bigger team. I do not disagree with that. Yes, um... Yeah, sure. But um, they are satisfied with it. Against Vaselons, they are excited with the performance overall, um, as am I. And uh, we won against Karlstadt. So. But this was really a lucky one. This was a lucky one. Overall, though, um, they're happy with us, and uh, that's okay. New contract to be offered. Well, okay. When? The supporters, though, um, they are pleased with the match results, apparently. Yeah, this is this is due to the fact that they uh, rate uh, the the wins against uh, Vasalons and Karlstadt even higher, for some reason. So, fans are happy, we are happy, I have no idea why we should watch that uh, game. <laughs> this is, this is a, not a fair one. Um, so this will go down as a 5-0 probably. We're no longer part of the club. Ugh, club. The cup. There is no use in uh, scouting that match.
We dropped a lot of frames here. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully uh, we can fix this going forward at some point. But, um, well, the best I can do for now is that uh, OBS uh, doesn't disconnect. So. Well, that was a close one, apparently. Um, I didn't expect that. Can we finally make a signing? Hmm. Well, it takes a while. Okay, so against Hanninge, um, Ishak will probably not be with the squad. Um, either we get the transfer in, which uh, doesn't look that likely so far. We offered him a really great contract though. There's one other club that uh, also wants to come in. And I like his trait, I like his personality. Overall, this might be a good player. We might lose the silver. Hopefully, he can uh, make a decision at some point. Because it's either Kulovic um, for the next match. Or it will be uh, Volsmund or whatever his name was. I don't think Ishak will make it to the squad. <laughs> or maybe maybe for the bench. But uh... Okay, so there's a training report for Hagedal. He improved a little bit in decision making. Doesn't matter much though. Um... For us, he plays as a central defender, and decision making is certainly part of it, but um, this is the natural development at the end of the line, more or less. Um, he will not improve by much going forward. That's okay-ish for us, but he's not an important player in that sense. He just plays like an important player. Then we've got a lot of trials for um, people that do not offer that much to us. Mosgard, for example, shoots with power and likes, his, uh, likes the ball played into the feet, but as a striker he wouldn't work for us, and in this role he's not good enough to be paid whatever he wants, especially not at 29. Hmm. We've got enough people here to play, at least for now. He's determined and also on the way down. 29 year old. Another 29 year old. <laughs> This is not strictly bad, but uh, I don't think this is a worthwhile signing. We looked through these yesterday, by the way, with uh, Mika Billion. But I'm just going through them again, to be sure. This, look at these uh, technicals. There's some technical deficits here that I'm not willing to tolerate. Prebenhilde, well, not wa with that age. Um, 24, he's more of a passer and more of a playmaker type. 
but it looks like he's more of an advanced playmaker, if that makes any sense. We don't play an advanced playmaker. And he's not uh, he's not strong enough to be a striker or anything. So I don't think this is viable. Serta Gemichi. He curls balls, tries long range passes. The long range passes aren't good. Curling the ball with that technique, sure. But he's already 33. So this is not a viable signing for the future. Luke Ray. This is a, a weird sample of um, attributes, I think. You are not not the attributes, the the traits. Um, so he runs with the ball down the left, and then he cuts inside from the left wing. I'm not sure if this in combination if this really works. They they might even conflict with each other. Um, he likes to lock the keeper though. Um, that's with with somebody with that finishing. This is good. Um, as an inside forward on attack duty on the left wing he would work, but um, we've got enough people there, and he's seriously going for money if I'm not mistaken. He wants to be a French player for 130 years. So this is a lot of money for us, and that's why we didn't do it. Same with him, he's too expensive. It's not like I don't want this guy in the squad, um, he can certainly do that can also, on the other hand, with that finishing and that long shots as a Metzalas, he probably won't serve as a Regista. That lack of flair is really concerning. I don't know. Box to box, maybe. Is he better than Nila Fossel, though? Not as a box to box midfielder. Not really. Not by much. His trial comes to an end, and uh, so it's Wolzund. Wolzund. Marcus Wolzund. And the other two here, too. Um, let's not go into detail with this. They want us to avoid relegation overall. High tempo pressing football, make the most out of set pieces. Yeah, this is fine. So I don't care about this, this is all good. And um, the current contract, what's the ex existing? Same wage, sure. I mean, we'll, uh, even willing to go with a two year contract just to have the peace of mind. Okay. How about something like this? We don't want to waste too much of the club's money, right? Sure! Now we've got a contract that is uh, one year longer and uh, we earn a bit less. In in real life I would never do uh, such things, but um, this is the opposite here. Um, I want to keep the club in, uh, in a good, under good financial circumstances. So, uh, yeah. I don't want to plan long term. And there we go. So we've got a new contract here. And uh, this guy comes in for appearance more than we do. So he's at 250 now. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. We will spend some money. And uh, the rest of the squad will be... Uh, I don't know. He's 29 though. So... Um, for him this is probably all he can do. But he's cap perfectly capable to play as a deep lying forward. He's a decent jumper, he's got a decent head. Um, his long shots are good. He can do whatever he wants, really. With that creativity and, and, and flair and so on, uh, he can probably be com complete forward. Um, not sure if we want to go there in, in, in this uh, formation this season though. But um, as a DLF, sure. And uh, this opens options for, for the future. Because... Um, with such a deep, uh, with such a striker, we can uh, actually employ a, a shadow striker, maybe, um, going forward, because uh, he will be able to play off passes. Um, well, the division is not great, so maybe it's better to play him as something else. 
as a targeted forward, though, this is not to his strengths. Um, he's more of a all well-rounded player overall. As I said, probably a complete forward. Complete forward would be wonderful. He he just uh, lacks the vision, really. So in that sense, um, yeah, passing training and uh, hope that he um, serves well as a deep line, uh, as a as a complete forward. And um, I'm actually willing to give it him uh, a chance immediately. In that role, even. Where is he, though? What the hell? He was placed in the U19 for some reason. Oh, he was still there. That's the problem. Yes, I'm happy. So, let's hope the complete forward will uh, do what um, we expect him to do. Maybe we expect a bit too much of him though, but uh, on the other hand, on that money. He's entirely used to this at this point. The only thing he is not used to is his role, but that's not a problem, because he will per we will personalize it anyway. And play him as a deep line, uh, as a complete forward. He can take more risks. So this is the, let's check the instructions. Roam from position. Yes, he can run with the ball, he can dribble with the ball, he can... Um, basically he transcends um, technical instructions at this point. Because I think he will be better um, finding the space himself. That's okay. So this is good. Moves into channels. He's got the attacking movement for it, yes. Um, he's got anticipation of the ball movement. Uh, decision making is decent. Flair is decent. He's got good teamwork. He can do those too. Um, take more risks. Definitely. This is passing risks. So um, he's got passing 9 um, and technique 12. But um, the only thing that's missing here is the vision. So... This is so-so, but on the other hand, this is a, in, in, uh, well uh, in front. I do not expect him to lose that many balls. And uh, creating chances is probably part of his job at this point. Dribble more is fine, and hold up ball is fine too. Um, he can certainly improve in some areas of the game, but on the other hand, he's 29. I don't expect him to um, change much. And that's a good thing in this situation. He will not change much. Injury suspiciability is a problem, though. He's got above average injury suspiciability, so we got a problem there. Then again, um, we can play him also on the left wing and in midfield in case it's needed. So um, even if we have a striker on the bench, um, he can drop back and just contribute in midfield going forward. And uh, the only thing he's really unsuited to do is defending. That's okay. So also he, he, he winds up opponents. Which is a good trait to possess, I guess. Our strikers, though. Kulovic is balanced and 24 years old. And um, where's Ishak? Ishak is balanced and he's 25. Both of them do not have traits. Can we give them traits? Does Does this make any sense to give them uh, traits at this point? Because there is an average influence on Kulovic, still. So he might get some influence from him. Ishak no longer. Well, we'll have to wait. And, um, and now we can um, be behind a. Uh, uh, Voltsund, basically. I, I will learn the name at some point. I, I will probably say this name a lot. So um, anyway, um, behind uh, Voltsund, we would probably be able to um, to train a new, a younger striker now. Um, who can uh, adapt to the circumstances and grow behind him. If we keep Voltsund around the club, that is. Because um, he just signed for free so hopefully um, we can uh, reduce the wage a little bit and um, keep him for the remainder of his days in football. That would be great. 
I'm seriously if we're able to to offer him like 200 or something for the next season and uh, he doesn't decline all that much um, because he plays every single match um, or maybe with with the odd exception um, then this would be fine but um, he's definitely one to go for a single striker role um, he can dominate a game I think or I, I w should put it another way um, maybe even if he doesn't dominate the game um, by himself he definitely um, is well rounded enough to be threatening in every situation there's some coaching assignments that are empty yeah this is my bad so sorry to say this but you have to do the other two too maybe we will sign new stuff though <laughs> well there is none so uh, that's why they are happy How important will Marcus Waldson be in helping Jitter Hawkdarts to be successful in the future? He's the best. Yes. And uh, actually we will uh, change the style of football because we will try to go with a complete forward. Which um, he might be able to do, he's borderline capable. Um, so this, this counts as one star rating um, for us right now as a complete forward, but um, you know These star ratings don't mean much anything uh, anyway, and um, it's it's more about uh, the passing um, Really, that's the only thing that's a bit lacking, but on the other well the vision to be more precise but um, If he finds the odd pass from time to time, that's good and uh, otherwise uh, the more risky passes are still a good idea just uh, due to the role up front. What's the best position for him? Striker, man. Striker. We have two and a half options up front now. So, no. It, this means that Kulovic might have to leave, yes, um, but otherwise, which which is a sad story for Kulovic, really, but um, yeah. He doesn't like that. Yes, this is a magnificent capture and we're happy with it. finally realize his potential. Didn't he do so far? Let me have a look. Where did he play so far? So he's spirited. His personality cannot be that bad. He played... well, I don't know about these leagues. He was in Norway. Oh, does he speak Swedish though? Yeah, he's fluent in Swedish. Good. <laughs> that would have been the day. But uh, he's fluent in Swedish, so that's okay. Um, and he wants to commit his future to the club already. But uh, we will um, give him some time on the pitch first. I should probably, for a player like this, um, that's not what I was looking for. Um, I'm looking for a, for a hidden attributes calculator. There it is. So um, he is not a new gen. He's got determination 11. He is spirited. 
There it is. And uh, his media handling is media friendly only. So, no big deal. He's got professionalism between uh, 11 and 17. Good pressure. Ambition and loyalty, we have no idea. Sportsmanship is um, below average, probably. And uh, controversy is below average, probably. Which is a good thing. So in the end, it's about um, it's about a lack of ambition and loyalty, which um, why? It's not that important. Um, the professionalism and the pressure are there, though. So um, we can expect of him, like we can we can tell him that we expect a lot of him every single game. We we should be able to. Let's see how he does next game with uh, the um, squad that is around and um, yep yeah. hopefully we can make it work also I think we should instruct him to shoot more often if I'm not mistaken um, that's a coach though yeah so he's a coach and he comes in just as a coach for us right yeah, we wanted him to do the defending coaching and uh, improve coaching all uh, overall a little bit at least. He can probably recommend a signing too. And that's uh, not big money for us. And now we might be able to um, ask for another coach, because why not? So, a match against Harninger, we want to recommend, we want a new signing, in case we can. So, um, Harninger apparently uh, won the last match, this will be a tricky one. We are expected to draw. I don't know about him just yet. Free match unbeaten, yeah. Two draws and a win, cool. Sure. So um, the the remainder of uh, the ones behind him, um, one of these clubs will probably win. So uh, at least one. Um, so we might go down into the relegation zone. Um, I will not accept that. We need to win. Huh. <laughs> He'll play immediately. I can confirm that, of course. He'll play immediately. That said, he's also a good bench player, by the way. Um, he's he's a good replacement option on the on the bench. Hopefully, he doesn't have uh, any preferred uh, numbers, because um, if it, he's got a preferred number, we've got a real problem. Um, if it coll uh, collides with somebody else, well, not a real problem. It's just annoying. Korovic uh, is on the way back. So is there anyone that trained really, really well? That is in the squad. Ngongo is in the squad. Melander is in the squad. Muteba is, in, Muteba is not in the squad. But uh, Muteba might be in the squad. So that's the first thing we learn here. Muteba can go back into the squad. Um, the other ones... 
What about those that are left out? Kulovic did well. Ishak didn't do well. For Ishak, really, um, he needs to train better. Warwick, not horrible anymore. This is uh, an option. Puget, better, but not as good as I would like him to be. Lilida, though, didn't do well. Do we really want to give Puget a chance? Look at the, the decline in form. If he's got another a match like this, we put uh, we put Lilida to the bench, or even uh, outside the squad. Ostrom played a few minutes last game. Didn't do much. Um, didn't train well for his level. Malte Ekman. Better training, but. Uh, Not as good as Helberg. The thing with Malta Ekman is though we need him as a replacement for, for both these positions. Um, Helberg on the other hand is a replacement for Forcell. How did Forcell do? I think he's really he's his core of the of the squad. I cannot leave him out. And uh, definitely not Bultigard Blom though. Um, we'll pull Hel Hellstrom here. So um now we could argue that we do not want uh, want a central defender on the bench. Depends. Did anyone train well? Wickberg is decent. Johansson. Decent. Boldegord Blom. That's not enough. We'll, we'll put Wickberg on the bench. I hate to do this, but um, he's the best we have. And with Malte Ekman, let him come and complain. Because, oh no, don't let him come and complain. So, training performance or no training performance, his performance on the pitch has been horrible. 6.2. He'll rest this game. Walter Ekman is a register, he's got a decent long shot. There are so many instructions now with any uh, any of these players. Is that something he, we should avoid with him? Shooting. How's his shooting though? Finishing 9, long shots 10, good technique, good composure. This guy should try to score. All the time. In, in that sense he's a... Uh, what's the difference? Yeah, he's, he's just spearheading the attacks otherwise, um, which we do not want him to do. We want him to, to drop deep and uh, contribute to build-up play. But overall, this is good. And uh, he already had some time to train in his role, at least one day. I'm excited. So we spent money on him, now there's uh, this big of an expectation for him. But on the other hand, um, we will, he will take his time. He will adapt to the squad, adapt to the role, and uh, now we need to hold a team meeting, apparently. What is it? Played up the importance of the match. We need to win here. Fantastic. Everybody reacted in a positive manner. Um, there's some positive influence here. Overall, we improved the atmosphere a, a tiny little bit. We gotta win these two. Seriously. But um, if we win one, we're um, already in a good position. So let's win the next one. They all left. Um, he's the new assistant manager for the U19. That's good. And now that we have a new assistant manager down in the U19, he can recommend a signing. And uh, we can look into his training assignments. Because um, as an assistant manager, 
well, we signed him to be fitness coach to a degree. But um, his best categories are this and probably not this. This too. This will do. So we're not good at it. Well, he can do one of the categories, right? And now it's one and a half, so it, it's of no use. Um, that's even worse. What are we good at? None of this possession training, apparently. This is what we're good at. What is he good at, though? Otherwise... He's bad at it. So it doesn't matter much. Um, this is the best we can do for for the time being. And uh, for the regular training, is there anything that changed? No, we signed U19 stuff, right? Yes, we signed him. Bukeland. He is a. We signed him as a defensive coach, though. He can only do one, but that's already an improvement. Yes, it is. So that's a tiny improvement, but it's an improvement. And we didn't pay much for him, so this is good. He signs a new one-year deal as an emergency backup, and then we have somebody that... Uh, he's a recommended signing. I'll think about this for a second, and I'll go for a toilet break, and then we will uh, do the game.
Fine. Let's go to the game. Also, uh, Adrian Dashi looks uh, decent. But um, for that money, that's a bit questionable. Yeah, for that money, I want more. I want a good personality for that money. So, uh, no. But thank you very much. Games tomorrow. And uh, we will try to hammer them. Just to put a few goals in, right? Let's go through individual training there. And see who is praiseworthy here. Melander is. And if anybody's annoyed that we praise them every day, uh, week, that's probably because they train well every week. Elberg, yes, I realize I forgot somebody. Hagedal, well done, sir. Puget, also well done, even if he don't make it into the squad. Forcell, decent training. Okay, he doesn't like it anymore. Asasan, this counts as good training, apparently. Berg, this is, this is unlikely to be praised though. Christopher Alp, same as always, no good training here. He should do better. Lilydal, no good training here either. Westberg. Da Silva actually improved in training a little bit. He's been a good guy for the majority of the time at the club. And uh, we will also criticize his training. Okay, that's it. We will not talk about the last match um, to most of them at this point. Sure. Let's go to the match. So everybody expects a draw. Yes, he will make his debut from the start. He can cope with it, I'm sure of it. He's got decent uh, pressure handling, right? Yeah, he enjoys big matches. So um, this is this is only slightly green. Um, the spirited personality says, um, I think, 11 to 17. No, pressure is 15 to 20. So um, that's probably only pressure 15 or something. But um, that's good. That's still good. And um, he's already 29, so I don't expect him to improve by much. But um, if he can bring the performances to the pitch, um, he might improve in this league. Um, I want to look um, into his history, though. Um, so you might have noticed by now, I don't care where he comes from. Not that much. But um, what level of league is this? So this is 99. Well, he played in a league level of 115. And here it was 64. And this, well... It's been a long while ago. So this is on his level or um, above. Depending on uh, how you want to put it. Um, so he went down with them, with Nardo from the 2nd Division Group 2 to the 3rd Division Group 6. I don't know why... Yeah, he went down with them and they finished... 6. What's the standard of players there? Well, okay, we have no idea. But, um... Overall, this looks like um, he's a decent scorer, and um, they just didn't play him enough in that season, for whatever reason. He might have been injured or any anything like this, but it doesn't matter. Westberg's on a new contract, great. Korovic is not ready to be played, yes, we realized that. What are the next opponents? Let's scout them immediately. Urebro, Judic Walls, Lulio. Urebro, Judic Waltz. Where's Lulio? 
Oh, we already scout that match. This is wonderful, this fits us just nicely. So, um... It's very simple. Um, if we win the direct duels, we're in a good spot. So this is a direct duel against relegation, um, against Hanninge. Um, we might draw them into the into the rele relegation zone with this match. Just uh, by going beyond them. Because 26 points are not enough to um, remain in the league. And uh, they will have uh, some pressure on them. Same with Erebro. And uh, same with Udic Ball. So I think, yeah, which we will play. With uh, Lulio, we don't care, um, really. They they are fighting for promotion, and um, hopefully um, the game's a dead rubber to them uh, once we, we play them. But this is... It might be late enough that we play them so that the game's a dead rubber to them. Delcourt and Smet B. Delcourt are so far off from the promotion uh, spot at this point that they will not be uh, relevant. Um, it, it will not be relevant to them. Problem is, uh, Delcourt is always dangerous, so um, this is not a game uh, to take easy. And uh, last but not least, it is Smetby. I do not want this to be decided on the last day. I want this to be done now. But I can, I can want, well, whatever I want. They want us to change. Definitely not. Definitely not. So he will have a hard time with it, uh, with a position role in duty. For now, but it doesn't matter much to me. Or position instructions. Maybe we had too many last time. Seriously, why did we go there? Um, we can we can still look into our position instructions later on. For now, there's no specific marking going on here. Um, we'll let them have it at their own pace. Um, however they want to do it, and we will overlap on both sides and work the ball into the box, because uh, they want us to have some possession. Will we waste time? Probably not. Squad number needs to be given, he doesn't have a preferred number. Definitely number 9. Hellstrom starts? Yeah, Hellstrom starts. I, was, I kept thinking about a uh, Hilberg. So, he's one with a pressure. This is debut though. Well, we tried. He didn't seem to be moved. Waltzon for sale, and there goes the possession. Based football. Apparently, Ek uh, Ekman made it to the pitch. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Melander's not on the pitch and not in the squad this time. Due to bad performances so far. For sale, and this is uh, really just passing the ball around. Also, and Forsell might have won the ball back there. Didn't though. Long ball, Eriksen, Fine. Let's open the tablet immediately. There's not much to see just yet. That's a dangerous pass for Lipovac. Can we defend this? He runs down the wing, passes it back in the middle of the pitch. And I guess that counts as a finish. Um, we shouldn't give away these chances. So I will encourage the team immediately. Hagedal, Azarsson, Hagedal and Hellström. And he goes for the long ball. That might end up with Tillander. Nice. Well done. Nagongo, Azarsson, Azarsson with the long shot. That was a dangerous one. He's instructed to uh, shoot less. But uh, he took that one. <laughs> Talanda with the corner. Not one for Walsund. Um, he's not that good of a jumper and header, I think. Um, we should probably change uh, the tactical instructions for corners. 
Let's do this. So, attacking on the right side. Yeah, well, this is okay. But um, he's more of a... I think he's more of the guy to, to um, distract the keeper. Um, he winds up opponents too. So, maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. Um, but the central defenders should be... Well, okay, it doesn't matter. The central defenders uh, should be the better headers, I uh, was willing to say. Um, but um, the heading of, uh, of Hellstrom is really bad. They are strictly the better jumpers, and that's it. Hagedal, well defended. Calander, that uh, looked a lot closer than I would like it to be, though. But um, we've got it so far. Lering, this should be offside. This isn't probably though. Finlay. Oh, we give away another shot. To Uman. He's a dangerous one, I remember that name. Ekman, Muteba again. With the cross. Hagidal. There we go. Set piece. Chance. Hopefully we can get one in. Jakob. That's an easy one for Hagedal. Rubendal has a... Uh, he looks uh, to be someone with certain attributes. Yeah, look at that acceleration and pace. Wow. So, we gotta show him onto the weaker foot at least. Now we get the offside. Yes, this is highly annoying. We were well in possession back then. Blose. For Rubendal. Who goes for the long shot? Telander. In the middle of the pitch. Ngongo. With the cross. Volsund. It was uh, offside, apparently, but um, this is how it goes, yes. Jakob, Ullmann, Hellström, well defended so far. Liljedal, Ekman, Muteba, Hellström. So this is the short passing I, I expect of them um, to be viable all around. Can Liljedal get to the end of this one? Yes, he can. He's also instructed to dribble more. He's a good dribbler overall. Nice pass for Waldsund. You might have seen the area there where he was. Really interesting stuff. He moves a bit more and uh, tries to contribute in build up play. So I like that. As a complete forward, this is his job. Um, he's got the eye for it. Asar Son. Lering. Easy one for Hargidal, and this is another long ball for Lilidal. That should not be offside. Oh. He should have stolen that one. But overall, this, game's look, uh, this game looks like it's uh, at least fair. Telander with a cross. Bjornberg. Long ball. Muteba intercepts it, loses it, for Cell is there to recycle possession, though Ekman, that might be offset for Waldsund. Might. It, he also didn't uh, hit the goal, but um, this is what he can do if he's not offside. So far, the central defense looks good. At least until now. Hagedal, Ekman, well done by Ekman. Frossel, Hellström. Frossel, Hellström. And there's a long ball for Telander, who doesn't manage to get to it, but Ngongo is still there. There seems to be a pattern. Mm, not a bad cross by Ngongo. Nice idea. Ekman, Ngongo again, Telander. 
Talonda goes for the shot immediately. <laughs> well, uh, long shots are not his strong, strong suit, but uh, we instruct him to shoot more often. He's got a decent finish. So, um, if he gets one in by accident, that's okay too. Lipovac here. That's a corner. We face a corner. Can we defend it? Come on, guys, you can do this. Hagedal. No big deal. Muteba is already out on the wing. Doesn't manage to um, close down Blossi though. Lering. Blossi again. Is it Stolheden? I think it is. Gongo. And then they recycled it apparently. Arsarsson with the free kick. Ah, oh, Jakob's got it. It was on target though. Blose with a free kick. That's uh, not a good one for Rubendal. And it deflects off. Uh, who is this? Volson. Well defended by the new striker. Not what we signed him for, but uh, who cares? As long as it works. Blose. Stolheden. Can we close it down? Doesn't look like it. This might be offside. Yeah, it's upside. Good, good. No high quality chances so far. Telander. Pass from the Gongo, and this is probably offside, sadly. Yeah. But uh, he is instructed to, to cross less often, I think. The Gongo and this. No, he isn't, right? He's not. Hellstrom again. No big deal. Voltsund, will he see? Yes, he does. A bit late though. Viljedal. Cuts inside. Muteba. And uh, rec he recycles possession, I guess. Ball circles around. Ekman. Doesn't go for the long ball. Hagedal. Asarsson. Ekman. Nice long ball for Lilidal, who is faster, apparently, than his opponent. Muteba. Ekman. It's even a free kick. Some Somebody was onside. Doesn't matter. I, I thought this was a shot. So, um, this is not good enough chance-wise. But, on the other hand, um... Let's tell them that this is not good enough. You have to do better. Gunberg. That's moderately well defended. Ullmann. Stolhilden. It's probably Hilden. And Setterberg with the ball. One of theirs got a yellow card now. Liljedal. Runs through the middle of the pitch. Ekman. Yes, he finds Nagongo. He's closed down uh, really well though. Wow. Nice movement here. Nice movement. Ah. Oh. Holtzund. So close. It was a good header though. And you could clearly see that he was uh, able to outrun his marker. We don't. We didn't even sign him for the pace. It's just uh, that he has the anticipation to go for these things. Ekman. Oh no, Ekman! Don't lose the ball. Nogongo on the way back defended it twice, three times. Ericsson, is this offside? It wasn't offside. Well defended though, so far. Well defended. That should be offside. Now if only offside gave yellow cards, right? But, um, yeah. Rubendahl with another yellow. 
This looks concerning. Hackman's there though. Fine. Fine. Can somebody take the yellow card, please? Well done by Hellstrom. Well done by Hellstrom again. Muteba, Ekman for Cell. He's in central defense right now. And then Hellstrom just goes for a long ball towards Walson. Kernberg. Not a problem so far. We're 55 minutes into the game. How can we strengthen the squad? Not sure. It works just fine. Seriously. I'm happy with that more or less. Um, not with these balls though, but um, Hargidal. Oh, again with the first touch, just like last game. Lilidal is on, on thin ice apparently. Um, yeah. He didn't contribute that much anyway. So let's put Skulomo on. Is there anybody else that needs to be substituted? Hargidal is tired. That's it. Hargidal is tired. And also he uh, already had a, a lack of concentration there. So um, hopefully one of the others can contribute and score a goal. Lipovac. Fine. Can somebody please close this man down? Rubendal, also on a yellow. Rubendal, Uman deflects. Well done. Liljedal goes past his man. Liljedal, he's still on the pitch. Liljedal, nobody up front. Muteba. Gunberg with the throw for Fredriksen. Long ball. Well, that shouldn't be a problem for Wigberg. Ekman. Asarsson. Wigberg again. Hellström. Hellström with a long ball. Skilermo clearly onside here. Oh. Uh. Well, the striker was there, but um, it was. I think it was intercepted. And. Uh, Resulted in that sort of a lob. Well done here. That is uh, not a good idea, Mr. Rubendal. Here we go. Wonderful. Now, hopefully, we can get something out of this game. Because at this point, uh, well, let's not go through the middle. Let's uh, go over the flanks, but um, uh, over the wings. But uh, we should be able. To, um, to dominate this game now. And um, Talander. I was interrupted there. Not sure why the, why the game continued. I didn't press anything. But it doesn't matter. Corner. <laughs> a penalty would have been nice and a second yellow card for him too. But uh, we gotta do it now. Under Hellström. There it is. Let's disregard the tactical instructions. Because um, I just tried to encourage them. Now we can go for the appraisal. What a lucky coincidence. To have that red card in the game and immediately score afterwards. We gotta see this through now. It's not even a good header. It's just a... Uh, well, it's in... <laughs> it's the best header in that sense. But, um... This is what we were hoping for. Now they will need to make the game. To be creative with it, but uh, really, we will not help them. Mm. We'll, we will just uh, try to dominate possession and uh, waste time a little bit. Play the ball around. Nagongo, Telander, Asarsson, Ekman. Nice ball by Ekman. Ah, Jakob's there. Can we get this uh, through the finish line? Over the finish line, I guess it is, in English. Voltsund, well done for Skilomo. Asarsson, Voltsund, doesn't score on his debut. 
Not for now, anyway. Blosse, Uman, Forcell, well done. Really well done, and this is not a great pass. Tillander, Tillander with a better pass. Asarsson, Ekman. Ekman's the one usually to find the nice killer balls. Skilomo, Skilomo, Skilomo with the cross. Tillander's not the one to go for the header though. Nagongo. Wow. What a tackle. And he hit the ball. Wickberg, Ekman. For sale. Not a bad idea. And endure for the corner. Can we score another one? Well, let's wait for the corner and then uh, we will go with some substitutes. He looked nervous coming on. We're in 10th spot now. Tillander. Ekman. Well, this is what he's instructed to do, so no surprises there. Nobody marked him. Of course he went with the long shot. Forcell, Hellström. Forcell again, Muteba. Will he run wide with the ball? No, he doesn't. We retain possession though. Muteba. Wonderful pass by Muteba. And Wolfson doesn't score. So they made a few substitutions here. Um, where does this lead? So over the wings they are really weak um, at this point. There's there's nobody supporting, uh, especially the right uh, wing. So well, amid Salah might, but the right wing is vulnerable, I feel. So we will try to pass down that lane. Retain the ball more often than not though. Yeah, let's waste time frequently. Doesn't matter. Um, we do not need this. Nogongo has a wonderful game so far, but he's exhausted. Um, I'm willing to bring uh, fresh personnel on here. Hellstrom we cannot exchange. Or we cannot substitute. Um, this is the second stoppage, so we've got one more going forward. Telander. He's pleased, he's on a 6.9 rating, and at this point uh, probably Warwick can come on. And now there's Alpen Helberg left. Both of these uh, can contribute in their own way, but uh, this doesn't need to be now. Go out there, retain the ball, just pass it around for another 15 minutes. It doesn't matter. Get the result through. If we score another one, that's great, but um, it looks like nothing happens here. And that's good. For sale. Got five minutes to go, by the way. This is probably the. Oh, that's well defended. But look at look at them. There's nobody up front at this point. So I think Helberg can come on um, for for sale actually. Um, yeah. I realize that uh, Arthurson is tired, but um, go out there, don't do anything shitty, and uh, be happy with it. Wickberg. <laughs> With the safety pass for Sederberg. Uh, oh, Tobit Sederberg. Hellstrom. This is not what I expect when I say retain possession. Mr. Back here. Mr. Hellstrom. Can we praise them at this point? Yeah, sure. And uh, he's already off to a bad start. Wonderful. Anderson. Ekman. Nice penetrating pass. And he goes for the shot. Well, this is what he's instructed to do. <laughs> Can we make it? Come on. What's this? That should be easy to defend. Sederberg, Hellström, Muteba. Skilermo. Ekman. Muteba. Muteba again. Waltzon clearly not offside. Out on the wing. Helberg. Assasson. Ekman. Oh, again. Oh, he didn't manage to, uh, to see that pass. But uh, there is... Uh, there is something to see there. Quite clearly. Anderson loses the ball, Ekman wins it back. Well done. 
Hellstrom, Hellberg, Hellstrom again. Mutaber. Maybe we went over the board with uh, opposition instructions in the last games. Maybe that's it. Skillermo. Will he go for the run? Well, not yet. Hellberg, Waldsund, Assasson. <laughs> he, he was with acres of space. He's just so exhausted he couldn't make the run for the goal anymore. <laughs> but, um, that's it. We should win this. This is uh, time wasting in a nutshell, yes. Um, wonderful. Hellstream. Got it. 1 0. Due to a red card, doesn't matter. A result's a result. A uh, result. We're happy with it. And uh, it goes down to the header of Hellstream, really. We, we should do better. Um, and as a, as a first match, whatever. Um, maybe the pressure was uh, too high anyway. But. Uh, 28 now, 7 points to go, if we want to avoid relegation in under all circumstances. That said, um, this year is probably less. Um, 4 points difference now. And uh, also, the next match is against uh, Urebro, if I'm not mistaken. So, how did they do? Um, Solentuna lost quite heavily, actually. Um, Motala lost. They will uh, probably re retain that spot if Hammarby... Um, this is this is just outstanding. Oh, okay. They they played each other, so um, this is okay. Um, I would have preferred a draw though, but um, anyway, Hammerby won that one. Judik Valls lost to Tabby. Thank you, Tabby. Thank you very much. Gavle and Lunds played one one. That's uh, uninteresting to us. Lulio and Urebro um, drew. Urebro did good to draw against Lulio. That will be a hard one. Smet B1 against Vasalons. That's, uh, yeah, that's dangerous. Then we've got um, uh, Karlstadt lost against Umeo. Doesn't matter much to us. These, these, these three, they are basically out of the danger zone. Um, if we can win the other one, uh, I, I call it. We will not get relegated. 31 points will not be needed. Two. I don't think 31 points is uh, within the relegation area this season. There's six games left, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of the, some of these might play each other, or some of the the influence clubs. And then, uh, well, we won against Harninge, so they lost, which uh, draws them into the relegation battle to a degree. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty dominant, but this is mainly uh, in the second half after the red card. What do I think of his debut? Hellstream was wonderful. He made, he basically won that game single-handedly, more or less. So, that's good. I don't care about the referee's performance. Would you favor the introduction of video review? Sure. <laughs> so this is the 30th player now that we fielded. Yeah. Okay. Um, why is the number so high? Because, uh, I don't know. Rotation? Mind games? Again with the new position.
So we completed the assignment apparently to scout the game. Hellstrom did great. We should praise him for the performance. Wonderful. <sighs> Wonderful. There's two other players now, Korovic and Molsund. Who's got the pers best personality in the club? Anderson. So he can definitely uh, welcome Marcus. And hopefully that helps him to settle in a bit uh, a bit better. Um, he's, he's off to a mediocre start. This is uh, how it goes. But um, I think we saw as a complete forward that he can contribute. He is, he's a, a, a constant threat to the opposition. He drifts around the opponent's space and, um, well, within their penalty area and also outside of it. And um, he plays dangerous passes. Even, even though um, it's, not, uh, it's not like he plays the most creative passes. He plays the passes up front um, that uh, nobody else is uh, willing or capable to play. He's, he's out here and uh, plays the pass for Lidl to cut inside or something like this. This stuff happens. So yeah, anyway, six games to go, is it? Five games to go. So we've got 15 points left. Um, and... Well... It's it's rather simple. Um, if we win against Urubro and Udic Walls, we're through. That's it. Gotta win these two games and then uh, not be concerned about Lulio, Dalkert and Smetby. Especially not about Smetby at the last day. I really don't want to play uh, for, for relegation in the last match. So um, if we win these two, um, we've got it. And that's uh, less than 35 points, by the way. So, um, yeah. That would be uh, 34. Well, okay, it's it's not a, not by any stretch a, a big statement here, but sure. Um, at, at least we would need uh, the 31. I think these are um, these are not in uh, under the the threat of being relegated at this point. The 31 point clubs. Um, also, there is something else. The goal difference here with minus three is really not that horrible. If we look at some of these, so Urubro are perfectly capable to um, to change that, to change their fortunes. But um, the others here, if we are not, if we do not get, I don't know, um, hammered in the next five games, and these all um, score a lot of goals, then goal difference should be in our favor overall. Also, clean sheet last game, that's really important. I realize that this is uh, mostly done to the red card, but um, that's really important. Last time we lost against him. And I have no idea how we did this. How we lost against them. Was is da? You you can see it. There's a tiny spot here. Apparently, Nina Fossell and uh, Malte Ekman have a have a decent relationship. There's this tiny yellow thing in the corner here that denotes that.
Okay, Moreira da Silva has agreed to leave. That's uh, at this point. That's probably business-wise. That's okay. I'm sorry, sir. Maybe we will manage in uh, in Portugal at some point, or wherever he goes. Peru Pinheiro. Is it Peru? Peru? It's probably just. Yeah, it it's probably just means that it's not Peru, but Peru. I have no idea. Let's appreciate this though. He's made 30, uh, 93 appearances for us. Scored a goal. 10 assists. This is not great, but um, he's been with us throughout the leagues. He's had a long career in Sweden. And uh, now he went back to... Wherever that is. Portugal, yes. He went back to Portugal. So, um... He was born in Porto. Yeah, that's his primary uh, language. And... Uh, <laughs> He's got 195 days left to be Swedish, by the way. Just uh, just for fun. But, uh, yeah. No use in that. Not for him. Good. Good. Let's have a look at the scouting report here. They play uh, Cadenaccio style. And... Uh, well, we saw that last time. Let me have a look. They scored two on the counter. <laughs> That's it. We lost against them because they scored two on the counter. And we were absolutely unable to... Um, let's let's look at these games. Uh, these goals. From last, uh, last uh, time's match. I want to see how it took place. This is, this is the first thing I'm interested in. So... Um, Nolgren, Christophers, and that was a long ball. And I remember. I already remember. Muteba just was absolutely unwilling to make the run. Again with Nolgren here. Again, Sabri. And again an error in defense by Muteba. This is, this is the two goals we conceded last time. That's it. And they had, well, we had 10 shots on goal and they had 8. It was an overall, um, I think it was a was a decent game um, from our side, but really Muteba wasn't up to the standard. Um, that was entirely impossible. And uh, given that this uh, Sabria guy will still be around, cuts inside from left wing. Yeah, don't, don't know if he will play on the left wing or on the right wing, but... Um, He's dangerous. He's really dangerous. And uh, he's not even that good. If you look at this. I don't know what happened back then. Moteba was, I don't know, half asleep on the, on the pitch. Two times, that is. He had a really bad game. Now, obviously the central defenders could have done something too. But, um... I think uh, we should be well in control of that game. And we should be... Dominating that that kind of uh, squad, they are no better than we are, so I expect a win, and I expect it to happen uh, due to hard work and uh, good passing. So. Let's do this game. Anything else you guys would be interested in? Just let me know. Also, I'm sitting around uh, waiting for the game, so um, we can definitely have a chat along the way. Um, it takes a while. <laughs> Training performances will be... But whatever, we, we gotta win. 
Um, we have the first win. Now we need a one against Urbro, and then uh, then we probably uh, will be able to see it through. Um, actually, uh, if we win, win against Urbro and uh, the rest of the results go our way, um, we can already celebrate uh, being not relegated. So um, we definitely need that win. Because uh, the other opponents later on are really hard, and I am not really uh, willing to um, go for three points against uh, even against Smeppy. This is dangerous. L last game of the season, uh, you might as well go down. That's uh, dangerous. So there's an average response for the coaching advertisement. That's probably because we don't need a coach anymore. Oh, this is goalkeeping coaching though. Yeah, we need a goalkeeping coach. That's true. Um, <laughs> not one of these though. Um, I'd rather have him in the squad. <laughs> yeah, split biff, same division. And also, you were right. You were right about the striker. Um, unsurprisingly, even though um, he wasn't that bad. But um, I want to show you somebody. We welcome to the club Markus Woltzund, where I splashed some money on. And uh, to be frank about it, I think this is a good personality. He has a nice trade and overall this is a well-rounded striker for a 29 year old. Also this is the same season, so yeah we are in the same division. And we will not go up, but uh, we will probably not go down either. Hope that answers it. You interested in anything else? But yeah, this guy, this guy looks good. He can play basically everything here. Um, he's 29 though, so... <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, we c he, he could be perfectly fine to play until 32 or something. A striker doesn't uh, really get that bad. Um, if the mentals improve and the technicals are kept, and, uh, he might still be able to, um, to do really well. Especially in, in built-up play or um, due to good anticipation. And he has that. Well, okay, he has decent anticipation and off-the-ball movement, but he's got the composure. He's got the technique. He's got most of the physicals right now. Hi! Very welcome back, Kinos. So, um, the only thing that's, uh, that's needed now is that we extend his contract uh, to, uh, for less wages going forward. Okay, yeah. You're, you're the one to go for poachers and, uh, and advanced forwards. That's fine. We're, we're just uh, the other way around. But, um, I don't know if you've been around the last game. Um, he had a 6.4 rating only, but um, we already saw that he contributes to build-up play a lot. And uh, we created some chances just uh, due to him uh, roaming around, uh, around, the, around the penalty area. So in that sense, uh, we are a bit similar, I'd say, um, if you like advanced forwards, because um, they drift around a lot too. And I'm willing to play him as a complete forward even. So... Important player? Yeah, that's fine. And look at that reduction in wage. We paid 250 for him. A save back on the up. I'm, I'm not sure we're we're in a in a rather decent form now. Um So anyway, um, this is half the wage we pay him right now, and he got it paid for one week. So um, this is a no-brainer. Of course we will take this. Um, to a degree, he's not fast enough. He's, he's really just a well-rounded player. He's not that... I, I feel like um, the, the word striker is um, in that sense uh, misunderstood. So... Um, to, to be um, more diplomatic about it. I think uh, you prefer a striker that actually strikes, and to me a striker is more somebody that plays up front and contributes to the play in any way. So in that sense, this is not a real striker. This is more of a false nine, but uh, not, not in the technical false nine sense. He's somebody who contributes to play in different phases. 
and I do not expect him to score 20 goals. I expect him to contribute to scoring 20 goals. That's different. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, um, I'm perfectly willing to, to go with that contract. And uh, let's go with 110. He can have some money here. This is wonderful. Um, very willing to go do that. No promotion. Well, let's give him a promotion wage raise of 15%. We will not go up this season, so we don't care. And... Uh, the season the landmark goal bonus he can have. Really, he can have it. Don't care. If he scores 10 goals, I'm ha perfectly happy to, to give him 250. So, let's get the base wage down and um, that's it. Maybe we can get him down to 110. Let's say 20% here. And maybe we can also get this clause included. He doesn't want that. So, I expect him to do these games though, so, come on, 110? No, re really, it's more about the wage, I think. Hmm. He will not be willing to do this. That's fine. So, um, this would uh, imply that he is on a contract for the next season and then, um, if he's not injured, which I don't hope he is. Um, if he makes the 15 games, uh, he will have his contract extended. Also, the first thing we need is a relegation wage drop. In case we go down, which is highly unlikely at this point, we don't want to pay him. At least not that amount of money. Then um, we should probably remove this. He might make the odd game from the bench, so no need to pay him 6 euros for that. And uh, the loyalty bonus uh, is probably not needed either. Yeah, he needs some. Okay. Anyway, this this offer um, we will need to we will need to uh, renegotiate this stuff and then uh, can we remove this? No, he wants it. So uh, we uh, have to deal with the magnitude of both both things. This might take a while. He probably wants 5 euros here, so... Um, how much is it? Seriously? He insists on something uh, along the lines of 60 to 75 euros. Great. But uh, this is how it goes. Okay, it's exactly 75. Fine. Wonderful. And then uh, we will do the same here. Something between 200 and 170. We will find it. It's exactly 200. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, we can also try to get it up to 15 goals. No, that's not viable. All right, I can deal with that. If you score 10 goals, really, you deserve it. Is it for every 10 goals, by the way? No, it's a length mark bonus once it's reached, uh, right? Yeah. So promotion wage raise, we should reduce. Or get rid of, if we can. This is a dangerous one. On the other hand, if we get promoted, this is a this wage is a, a no-brainer anyway. Doesn't matter. He will probably go down to forty-five and then be annoyed. No, this works. Um, gold bonus and appearance fee. The gold bonus I'm fine with. The appearance fee is uh, mandatory for him. And uh, the goal bonus, can we remove that or reduce it? Apparently he doesn't seem he see himself as a primary striker, so... Uh, there's something he wants, probably 6 euros at this point. It's really about, uh, about small-scale money, yeah. I guessed it. Okay, <laughs> so, um, but this this makes it much easier for us. 
because um, last time we uh, concluded that we are willing to go with a contri contribution to the wage budget of um, about 80. 130 per week is much better for us. This is much better. Doesn't want that. Cool. All right. So now we have him on a, if, if he agrees to it, that is. But he certainly, he most likely will. Um, staff numbers update. What's going on? Yeah. There was a scouting spot that was removed. Great. Oh no. Give me a summary to inbox, please. Huh. So, anyway, I didn't understand uh, Kinos uh, previously. Sorry. Save back on the up. I don't know what that means. And, of course, we are trying to extend his contract immediately. Um, overall, he looks decent. This also um, this sets a limit to what we are willing to offer for a player that is um, well-rounded and a good contribution to the squad. Um, if we set for an important player 130 euros, this means, well, if we've got four important players, assuming that this is how the, how the squad is built, uh, some sort of an axis, um, 130 each. So we are willing to spend about 430 for um, that part of the of the squad. So for that third of the money um, of the wage budget, which means uh, overall we are in the area of 1,300 um, for the entire uh, squad wages. And that's um much more than uh, what we were willing to spend previously but um, the cup games really brought some money in so that's okay we can spend that on the squad now if we need to that is if we need to but we gotta be careful not to spend too much on uh, every single one of them and uh, not to spend too much on players that aren't worth it which reminds me uh, we should have a look into Jorge because um, he's with Piteo now, uh, now um, which are in the same division as we are. Apparently there's 150 offers for some guy named Mela, whoever that is. There's fitness coaches here. Oh, these look half decent actually. Some of them anyway. Uh, well, some of them anyway. Bookstrom, how much do you want to earn? 200? No. Definitely not. Um, is there even a... There is no coaching spot left. Is it? No. So, um, but uh, the primary um, focus here as a replacement Training coaches, there we go. The primary focus should be goalkeeping coaching at this point. I realize that uh, fitness coaching is also uh, in need of a better coach, but goalkeeping coaching is the worst. This will not do. So um, we'd rather continue the advert here. And uh, we're looking for a scout apparently. Club vision. Where is it? No. The staff section. There is one of two scouts available and uh, one chief scout. So, uh, and a director of football. 
So we can still do that. Apparently we're looking for a scout. Lindahl. Why not? Um, he's got good judging uh, ability and really the, the potential is uh, random anyway. It's not like they develop much with us. But 140 per week is definitely too expensive for us. Then we've got cults on here. Balanced. Uh, whatever. Definitely too expensive for us. Engblom. We'll go through all of these. They will all be too expensive and we will continue. 140. No. Coldstrom. 130. No. Oh, Fizovich. He's got knowledge in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Not a thing. Let's continue this. I also wanted to look into these. So, um, we need to find a goalkeeping coach that's better than what we have. This shouldn't be that hard. But um, we need to find a cheap option. And probably none of these is. If one of these is cheap, uh, we will look into his attributes. Uh, I don't think so, though. Holger Waldsteinus. 200. Kelberg. 170. Okay. Let's continue this. And... Uh, Maybe we'll find somebody at some point. Um, we can also look into the stuff once more, stuff search, and uh, look for a goalkeeping coach. But I think we've already been here and uh, had a look through all of these. Oh yeah, this is about um, about not being included uh, for stuff for the first team. And we've, we've talked to any of these already. There's absolutely nobody in here. Um, maybe we can go down to two. This is really crappy stuff. So um, at this point, I'm more concerned with the mentals. So maybe we find somebody that has a... I don't know. Something like this. Determined animation and motivation are really bad though, so this doesn't doesn't work. Um, yeah, over, overall this is bad, right? For Tony Falk. On the other hand, something like this guy, or this guy, they bring serious mental capacity to the table. This is uh, 28, uh, 33, and uh, that stuff is good too. We had a talk with him previously. So that's not the one. Same here. Um, determination and discipline are really good. This looks interesting. Even though his coaching skills are shit. Um, so this is 30... This is 42 points. And uh, we already talked to him, apparently. Then we have him. He wants to be a manager. Well, or a coach. But he's still too expensive. And something like this. He's a manager. Motivation and discipline are really great. But, um... Well, that's actually okay. Um, I can deal with that. But, um, he's still much too expensive. And then we already arrive in areas where, well, this stuff... This is probably also tolerable, but uh, there's a sports scientist here who could be a decent goalkeeping coach. No, not really. Not really. He's no good. Motivating, sorted. I mean, I guess. But he's been here, and he doesn't want this. Thanks for the follow. So, no, uh, goalkeeping coaching is really hard to get, and thank you very much for following me. Um, let me know if you've got any questions. We do this every week for the remainder of the month, at least. Every week, every day. Um, not every day, every weekday. There we go, um, for the remainder of the month, more or less. 
So um, you're happy to stick around and uh, see where it goes. You're not happy. You're welcome, I wanted to say. Hopefully you're happy too, but uh, that's for you to decide. Anyway. <laughs> oh, it's been a day. Okay. Well, at least this is just a mail. Um, that stream delay is massive because um, my computer lagged a lot um, while streaming. And OBS doesn't finish, the, uh, it doesn't lag out, um, other than uh, other tools on the market. Um, but uh, my CPU is uh, 13 years old. I run this on a potato chip. So um, this is why the lag is that massive. It gets bigger the longer the stream goes. If I start a fresh stream, it, uh, it's uh, new. But um, we're close to the end anyway. Um, I think I'll... Uh, I might restart either I might restart it and, and do another game or uh, just uh, do the last game and then uh, that's it but uh, that stream delay will go away once I buy new hardware it's just football manager um, grinding the, the computer to a halt so in a way that's my fault but uh, I cannot afford new hardware right now so Not much I can do. They all want individual training on these players and... Uh, I know these players, they are not willing to... They are not willing to put up with it. He's a penalty taker, I agree, he has penalty taking 12, that's okay. I will not go through these. No. I will not do this. I don't think he's a good free kick taker. He shouldn't. We need him somewhere else. No, no, it's a, it's all good. Um, uh, it's all good. I just wanted to explain. <laughs> I didn't think you were. Seriously, um, it's all fine. But I I realized that I need a new hardware for. Seriously, I, I've been realizing that for uh, 10 years or something. And uh, the, the point just never came up. So obviously I substituted uh, the, the graphic cards from uh, graphics card from time to time. But um, this is really ancient hardware at this point. Uh, so I don't care about this. This is all this is all stupid. Who's Anton Anderson? No, he doesn't have to play. He, he needs to improve in attributes, not with his weak foot. But um, I, I see it down here. Um, no, it's, it's 13 actually. Um, the, the, I think the CPU is 13 years old at this point. And uh, you, can, you can love about it all you want. Um, the, the thing is, um, I bought a 2500K back then. So that's an i5 processor, a uh, Sandy Bridge. And this thing is really old, but um, it's one of these. Um, it's one of the uh, the the things that uh, held up pretty well with time. Um, overall, I don't play like um, I don't know CPU uh, intensive in games uh, games other than Football Manager. I, I play indie games mostly, and uh, role playing games and stuff. So nothing that's heavy on a on a, on a CPU. Um, the, the last shooter I played was a cig cigarette, so that's not even a classical shooter in, any, in, in that way. Um, so I'm, I don't need it to upgrade it, right? I, do, I don't do video rendering or something like this. Well, not until now. Um, I might do going forward, but um, not, not yet. Cool, need not for sell. He's still a regular starter for us. I will definitely not change his playing time. Um, so, um, in that sense, um, I would, ha would have needed to upgrade the motherboard too, um, at some point. And that's, that's fine with me. But uh, this means that uh, all of a sudden you spend, um, I don't know, um, back then it was uh, three or four hundred euros um, for, for an upgrade. And uh, back then, uh, when I, I could have uh, done that, I was a student. So I didn't have, I didn't want to spend the money on it, um, 
because I d didn't need it anyway and uh, the, the improvement in performance wasn't that great. Now these days it's different, um, but um, these days it's much more expensive too. And um, yeah, I, w I will need to upgrade it at some point, but um, I will have a day job um, uh, going forward in April. So um, I'll be back in employment and then I will uh, earn some money. Um, a decent wage, I'd say. I won't be rich, but um, that should uh, be enough to buy new hardware at some point. So um, in the middle of the year, probably. And then all of this lagging and all of that stuff will go away. And also the delay, which is derived from the lagging. On the other hand, internet is really good here. So hopefully that explains it. But, uh, I mean, um, this is obviously the perfect setup for a sales pitch. Insert sales pitch here, right? <laughs> so, if you've got money to lose, <laughs> no big deal. You're very welcome to toss it in my direction and I'll, I'll put it in, uh, I don't know. Something like this, right? I'll put it, put it in a jar and <laughs> save for a new CPU if you want me to do that. I can definitely use that. Okay, so here's a friendly. Yeah, we can do that for the U19. Doesn't matter. Sure. We'll drive over. This loses up money, but uh, who cares? Let's let them have a friendly. So, now that I've talked about my hardware a lot, um, what is it you're interested in? Other than uh, the uh, giant delay? Let me know. <laughs> Well, the thing, the thing with being poor is um, we're all, at, as people, um, most of us are not interested in the absolute value. Um, no, um, it's, it's okay. Um, I'll, I'll do another stream tomorrow or maybe this evening, um, but probably tomorrow. And um, at the start of the stream, it's always good. And uh, once Football Manager reaches either new gen date or, I don't know, the, the start of the year or something, there's, there was this one date um, in between where it took for it took minutes to process. And uh, that's just it. I see it. The camera is lagging and all that. So um, I realize what it is, but there's not much I can do about it at this point. I can switch uh, process priorities, but it doesn't help. Um, the CPU is just bottlenecked on all cores. So, yeah. I'm from Germany. Um, Southern Germany, Nuremberg. And um, I'm originally from uh, Stuttgart in Baden-Württemberg. And now I live in Nuremberg. And I studied in Würzburg. So, um, yeah. I quit my job, um, moved in with my girlfriend. And uh, I'm out of uh, the, the old apartment in the basement now. So, um I've got some time on my hands right now, so I figured I might start streaming, and, uh, well, it's it's a bit of an accidental thing, and at the same time, I'm really kind of happy with it. So, overall, life's uh, moving in the right direction, I'd say. There's always uh, the, the bump in the road, but uh, hopefully the new job is good, and I'm happy with that, but um, overall, it looks decent now. And I will see um, how it will go with streaming going forward. So why do you want to hate? Oh, okay. Um, first of all, how do you hate a country? Wh what does that even mean? They are dangerous. That's it. I don't care. Oh, footballing wise. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, first of all, uh, welcome to the stream uh, from the other side of the world. Um, <laughs> this is kind of fun. So this this probably contributes to the delay too, right? Internet is not that fast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, as Germans. 
well at least at least my generation we grew up with a lot of guilt that we are absolutely uh, unresponsible uh, not not responsible for let's put it that way and that um you get a certain attitude right but there are always the people um, from a political point of view that are absolutely unable to comprehend history. So uh, these people are in Germany too. And um, they are everywhere. All over U Europe, actually. In a footballing sense, though, um, well, I'm, I'm more, or more of a club football guy. Um, and I always feel like um, international squads um, are not... How do I put this? The one thing that uh, correlates very well with the performance of football uh, teams is uh, GDP. And GDP by itself might be a flawed measure, but um, to have a competition where small um, clubs play big clubs without um, the opportunity to do anything about it because they cannot change the country they are derived from feels kind of nonsensical to me. I realize that this is important, but um, at the end of the day it's just... Uh, a way to cheer a team that uh, hasn't been together for a long time and will uh, probably change every every tenth game. Yeah, might be, but pff. so you're talking about Messi, right? Um, <laughs> I I realized the result of yesterday's game, but really, um, whatever. It's, if, if it were the other way around, I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to talk about this. Seriously. Um, it's not like I'm not aware of these things, but... Um, so, will we play like we will play uh, played against Hanige? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, well... Pff, you're... What's a, so uh, let me ask it the other way around. Would you be, uh, be um, would you be aware of a footballing icon in uh, in Germany? Who would that be? So Mar Marcus Asserson is a ball winning midfielder, and I, and I don't, I don't think he will make the difference. But um, I'm lucky to have him. Neuer or Müller? Um, okay, well, it, these are these are wonderful examples. Yes. Um, so. Um, uh, I don't know how um, close you are to Bayern Munich or um, German football in general, so I might go into into some uh, well-known facts for you um, at this point. So Manuel Neuer um, is w well, he's with Bayern Munich since forever, but that's not entirely true. Um, he he went um, to Bayern Munich from Schalke back then, and um, Schalke fans have not forgiven him for for that move. Um, so um, he followed the money, that I, or the really the the performances too. Um, he's he's got the ability for it, but um, at this point, uh, Manuel Neuer is at the end of his career. The, the, his career winds down, and he he broke his foot uh, skiing recently, if I'm not mistaken, or his his leg or something skiing. Um, there is. It is not without a doubt. Um, that he will ever make a comeback. He, he might not make it back into the squad of Bayern Munich going forward. So um, that's a thing of the past at this point. And uh, Thomas Müller is similar. Um, no, De definitely not. Um, Sch Schalke fans will never forgive him for that. For any club in Germany, to lose somebody to Bayern Munich is um, what happens. But uh, Bayern Munich is definitely not a club that is uh, well liked in Germany. You either like winning, then you like Bayern Munich, or you like to have morale, then you like someone else. And you don't like uh, Bayern Munich. That's about how it goes. This is, this is a bit simplistic. But um, also I'm from Stuttgart, so I'm from one uh, 
Kanti, I guess. One Kanti away. That's that's not the right way to put it, but um, they call this Bundesland here. So, yeah. And with Thomas Müller, um, really nobody can be annoyed about Thomas Müller so much. But um, he had a good career. And he was with Bayern Munich all the time. Right? It's, that's okay. But as a footballing icon, I feel like these, these two are great examples. German football is not Bayern Munich. German football is much more than Bayern Munich. And some of these things are definitely better than Bayern Munich. They are better than getting the, uh, the, the money shoved into the, um, in, into the rear side um, from uh, Allianz and uh, whoever owns the stadium right now. Volkswagen probably too. So Bayern Munich is in no way a club that uh, I respect from a... They, they didn't achieve all of this only due to good management. They achieved a lot of it also due to good funding. Which they earned. No big deal. But um, it's something completely different than, for example, Union Berlin, if you've ever heard of them. Union Berlin is without great, a great sponsorship deal and uh, without the, the money. They, um, they It's a tiny stadium and they moved up from second league to first league. And uh, now they devastate first league. Considering the, the amount of uh, money they have available to them. And that's uh, without great youth man uh, development and so on and so forth. Um, they just do well. Overall, this is really impressive to me. Bayern Munich is not. Bayern Munich is box standard at this point. This is what expe what's expected. So, um, yeah. Look it up. Seriously. So this is this is uh, in, in Berlin. Um, that's a main city in Germany, um, but, or, uh, depending on, on who you ask, um. So, it's, uh, in, in English, it would be pronounced Union Berlin. I'll link it to you. There we go. So um, this is the smaller one of the two um, clubs in, in Berlin. The bigger one is Hertha, uh, Hertha BSC. And Hertha has been with an investor and so on. Nobody expects you to have good, good German. Um, it's all right. My, my Spanish or um, whatever it is you talk down there in Argentina is also really bad. So, uh, or really bad. It doesn't exist. I'm, I'm borderline capable to pronounce some stuff. But uh, really, um, <laughs> this is probably me stumbling into some faux pas on the internet and uh, you talk Portuguese down there or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've never been to Southern America, sorry. But uh, yeah. It's always nice to, um, to meet new people, seriously. Very happy with that. So, um, it's Spanish. Okay, cool. Uh, we, we just sold a Portuguese player, so, uh, it was close. <laughs> ah, Brazil is Portuguese speaking. So, you see, I already learned something today. I didn't know. I didn't know. I had no idea. So the rest is, is Spanish. Okay, I didn't know. That's good to know. So, um, I should probably learn, um, uh, Spanish first then, um, in case I'm interested. Okay, well, um, I speak French, so um, I'm borderline capable to understand some stuff. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not... Hate is a very strong wo word. It's more like, um, we do not glorify them all. And uh, Germany in, in particular has a has a problem glorifying anyone or anything. So um, you you can see this in the political environment now. Probably I don't want to go down that road, but we, we also have a problem with uh, providing arms, for example. 
Um, usually we absolutely do not do that, but due to political circumstances right now, um, that got uh, a bit muddier, let's put it that way. And we definitely do not glorify single people. Um, we do not like that. Uh, also not in sports. There, there are people always that are good at their their craft, but um, it's not like yeah, the the national icon thing is a, a, a very slippery slope in Germany. No, I don't know. It's just a. At least I feel we don't like to do that, as as a population overall, compared to other other nations. That is right. We don't we don't have that footballing icon that. Uh, is glorified well probably there's probably in in older generation there's probably the odd player but um no not really yes but you don't have a history of uh, murdering a, a i don't know half a billion jews so um that's a well not half a billion but you know what i mean so um yeah This, as a as a nation, I think this is uh, difficult um, to deal with. On the other hand, I'm happy to live in such a nation. Um, let's say um, in your your northern neighbors, well, not neighbors, but um, a bit to the north, um, in the United States. What I see of the United States and their political environment is always, always baffling to me. This is all right-wing extremist stuff they're debating there this would be outlawed in germany we would put these people in jail immediately and um this this kind of in in that sense um, um i'm really confused by american well by united states politics most of the time but um they've got their own system but they never i mean they feel like they've always been the good guys right so, um, maybe that's part of it. Urebro, Judic Waltz. But on the other hand, really, um, so Judic Waltz is next. Where's Judic Waltz? Here. We've got another game against uh, somebody that uh, might go down. Yeah. Um, to be fair, um, what they call socialist uh, over there. Ah, okay. So, um, yeah. What what you call socialist in in, uh, in the United States is uh, common sense in in Europe, like healthcare systems and all that stuff, right? This is entirely baffling to me. There, um, the insulin debate. What the actual fuck? We get paid our insulin here if we need one. Uh, need it. It's if it's mandatory to survive, insurance pays for it. Not your own insurance, the mandatory health insurance that everybody has. No deal. No, 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 um, no debate. That's not a problem. We don't care about how much it costs. It's paid for. That's it. And I don't realize why this is any different in any country. Um, it's, it's only the United States, if I'm not mistaken, that have problems like that. So if this is what, uh, what a great country looks like, um, we've got a problem. And um, I don't want to don't want to ride the socialist uh, train here too much, but um, there's baseline ability to live, and that should be mandatory everywhere in this world. As a society, I think we cannot grow if we do not uh, guarantee this kind of stuff. People die every day because they cannot afford insulin. I don't get that. So. Yes, that's horrible. That's horrible. The most valuable currency you have in, in, in life is time. Time to live. Yeah. And still, um, you, you might want to do that from time to time. Just, to, I don't know, try to be healthy. Try to have a good time, too. I realize that this is on, uh, on odds from time to time. But, um... Once you're, they, they always say, um, uh, in your 20s, you, li you live like uh, you've got all the time in the world. And um, 
you will always stay healthy and in your 30s um you gotta um you gotta pay back for what you um what you spend in your 20s so um that's certainly it might have a certain truth to it so don't overdo it you can you can also be happy in life um later on it's not like you have to do everything once you're young but on the other hand enjoy your time and uh this extends to money at some point right so this is why i don't spend for for a new computer up up until uh this month it didn't matter to me um because i just played for myself and uh, it wasn't worth the improvement eggman with a wonderful long ball oh that was close well intercepted here by our new striker Waltzund. the gongo by the way we didn't set up any specific uh, individual instructions today hopefully they can still get a result eggman nice pass Waltzund turns around How can you not score that? He's got good composure, a finishing of 9. He must be nervous. What's going on? He creates chances out of thin air. In his second game now. He just doesn't score them so far. Eggman, Lilydal. <laughs> the hell? Uh, I've got a facepack for, uh, for new gens. I don't care about it. Well, I, I don't think there is a face pack for Sweden, really. And if there is, it's not worthwhile. Um, but um, I don't care much. I, I hate the eggheads that uh, get created by the by the game. So I use um, the, the face pack um, from Football Manager 2021 for new gens, which is called new gen face pack. So that's in here. Um, let me show you. No, Ostrom is not on the bench. Anyway, um, there is there is not a single uh, player in here that is a newly generated player. I cannot show you, but um, the, these um, you probably know that face pack if you use any. Um, that face pack is great. It's uh, AI generated faces. So in in the smaller leagues, nobody's got a face. Um, I looked it up though. Um, so this is um, out of the smaller leagues. This is also a tiny club. The village we we play in has 250 people uh, well up to 500 or something but um Jedehok Dal is like it I, it literally means a valley i think um in in the mountains or something like this and I, I got it translated yesterday it's uh or, or the day before somebody translated it for me sometimes swedish guys are around here nice shot so um this is like I, I, I've learned to despise the, the way to put this, but uh, this is probably football manager hard mode. Because um, we lose money playing friendlies, we lose money educating the youth, we need to get youth intake somewhere else, because our youth intake is horrible, there are not enough children to be born. Yeah, but who cares? You can, uh, you can identify the players and that's it. That's fine. Nice ball! Can we can we get it? Nah. That would have been a nice chance for a counter. So far, we're well in control of the game until this event. Rodriguez, Kidane. Yeah, that's it. Seriously, try it. Oh no, we gave away a penalty. Why? Why? The story continues. We've had our gripe with penalties. There it is. Some guy named Rodriguez scored. Ruben Rodriguez. He's probably Swedish. Anyway. Now uh, we need to climb that mountain. There's also other circumstances, like we cannot pay for decent coaching and so on. We have to poach uh, good coaches um, for, or uh, average coaches for minimum wage, basically. Um, because, um, or scouting. If you do scouting with this club, you lose 20k a season. 
<laughs> Champions League, yes. We're in third league right now. The goal is um, to reconsolidate the club financially. Um, we are good at this point. So you've, you're, you're a bit late um, to the stream. So we are good at this point financially. Um, but the goal is not to bleed money and to Im improve. Um, and hold the league and uh, hopefully um, go up at some point. But I will not push for promotion under spending uh, the, the entire amount in one season and then drop the save if it doesn't work. This is what other streamers do, I don't like this. So, um, not to insult anyone else, so to each their own. But uh, I like to play in, in a consistent manner. I will play the save moving forward. So, um, this is the fourth season, I think, or the fifth I do. And this is all I did for this installment of Football Manager. And it's, yeah, it's really fun um, with that small of a club um, to go for to go for sustained growth, I guess, is the right way to put it. Or maybe an appropriate way. So, that's the goal here. And um, to be fair, um, some of the other watchers really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know why, but um, it seems to be a rare occasion. It's um, less exciting though. You cannot cheer for promotion every single uh, season. But on the other hand, um, with this club, you cannot spend... Goalkeeping error. He came out, he had the ball, he dropped it, that's it. it yeah, it requires a lot of micromanagement, sure. Um, as an example, um, we dropped the scouting package, even the one for, for this league, because it's too expensive. And um, we still employ scouts though. But the problem with scouts is, um, if we send them out on scouting in Sweden, even just in Sweden, um, they move around the country a lot. So um, this is a difference between um, no money spent or a few hundred euros if they watch the next opposition from time to time and uh, 20,000 euros spent. If you have a budget of 40,000 euros a season for everything, like this is the sponsorship income and uh, the, the season tickets, uh, which are uh, borderline inexistent anyway, and um, all that stuff. To spend half of it on scouting all of a sudden is a lot of money. So um, you take the scouting and you get rid of it. And the scouts do not move. They sit in Yudha Hockdal all day. Other than uh, at scouting the, the odd player from time to time. But uh, they do not move. This is trials all, the di uh, all day. But recently we got included in cup matches and played uh, a second league club and a first league club which is called Premier Division in Sweden, if I'm not mistaken. So um, we played these and that brought some money in. Oh, rattled, rattled the post. It's not like, seriously, two arrows in defense, that's it. What can you do about this stuff? Hellström. That's his bad heading. He was there though. We gave away a penalty and we gave away after a corner stupid defense. That's it. This is absolutely... And Malte Ekman is on a 7.4 rating anyway. What are they doing? Okay, tactics. So, they play a 4-2-3-1. We should have done that earlier. This is on me. Seriously. Let's work the ball into the box. We need to create more chances, but I feel we can create against them. And then, uh, playing through midfield is fine. Wasting time is useless at this point. What should I stream in otherwise? German? That's... I don't know. It doesn't doesn't feel suitable to me. Um, I, I mean, I could do in German, but uh, I play the game in English. I'm a computer scientist. My life uh, happens in English, most of it anyway. I, I watch uh, TV. Well, I don't watch TV, but if I watch uh, some sort of stream, I watch it in English too. So, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. Um, 
It doesn't make much sense to stream in German to me. I'm not... So, yeah, it's, 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 uh, nobody asked uh, so far. So you're the first. Um, so um, I don't want to sound too defensive about it. Um, I think um, it's, it's force of habit, I guess. Um, this felt natural to me. Um, it's the same with presentations for in, in, a, in a business context. I just do them in English because um, I expect everyone uh, in, in computer science to be, to be fluent in English. So if somebody complains later on that this is not German, um, this is weird to me. You're, you're programming in English. Your documentations are English. Why the hell would the presentations in this business be any, if any else? It's just confusing. You don't want to mix two languages. So in, in that sense, uh, it, um, it's derived from there, maybe. And also, um, I'm, I'm not, you're probably aware at this point that there are not 500 people in the stream. So I'm not trying to adhere to a target audience to any degree. It's not like I'm trying to focus on something. I'm just doing what feels natural to me. I happen to, to stumble into this job in Football Manager on accident, just like I do every time. I started unemployed. I stream this in English, I do it with my old machine and that's it. And that's good. So far. Probably the, the stuff with, with the old hardware is uh, the one that needs uh, an upgrade the most. Because otherwise, really, uh, you don't want to do it as a business. At least not me. What's with Sederberg today? What's up with him? Seriously? Hagidal, well defended at this point. Rodriguez, don't let him score a second. Christophers. So, um, there's not much created here. That's certainly a problem. We would... We can put Gwar against Guillermo on a pitch. I've had enough of this. Um, there is nothing going on. Um, on the wings. Center and defense doesn't look good either. Alp can probably come on for Muteba. Even though Muteba is not responsible today for the goals we, we faced, but... Uh, so hopefully they can contribute something. And if I look at this squad, they are not exhausted in any way. Um, I don't think it's uh, better than average. Um, this is really just the internet, I guess. Um, my English uh, in, in school wasn't good. Um, I don't think it's good just yet. It's uh, I'd, I'd say it's uh, bearable at this point. But um, if you, your entire... I don't know. If your entire life happens in English, more or less, um, you get used to it. And also this is not like... It's not like I need to concentrate on this, right? Um, this is just me talking. I can do this. Kind of can do this all day long. It doesn't matter to me. But I've I've not spent a lot of time. I didn't spend a lot of time um, in in English speaking countries or something like this. This is just my regular life. So in that sense, um, yeah, it's a force of habit, I guess. But I don't I don't, I don't feel like this is very special either. Um, there's. We, we have, I'd rather say um, we have worse English from some point of view. No, I, I don't think so. Um, I, well, in, let me put it that way. I guess in Romanian, uh, is it Rom Romanian derived um, languages, I guess. So, um, especially Italy or France or something. Um, I think English there might be a, a bit of a problem overall because it's uh, so foreign to them. But on the other hand, um, I, I don't think Germany is very, um, very good with the English or with the French for that matter or with any other language. Because um, 
we still have the, the, the TV series and stuff. This is all still translated. They sync it for for in in uh, in German. And um, once you start watching that stuff in English, you cannot abide the, the bad lip syncing anymore. So um, you never move back. At at this point, TV is done for you. Um, all of this costs a lot of money too. Um, so um, yeah, the internet is just cheaper overall. And uh, games uh, usually are made in English, so um, you play the games in English. Even the ones made in German. Because uh, <laughs> most of the time the, the English voice actors and so on are just better quality. Same with the, with the translations in case uh, there is something to be translated. Usually English translation is fine. Um, the rest usually isn't, so who cares. This is, uh, we, we don't create any chances. Not to the degree that I would want to. Was it held trim with the long ball for Warwick? Yes. Warwick, Arsarsson, Ekman, and he goes for another shot. We don't deserve to lose this. No, they are made in, in both languages, obviously. But a German, uh, what's a German game you know? Probably Gothic series, maybe, or I don't know. Um, Risen. But this is old stuff. There's no no real game development, not big game development going on in, in Germany, I think. And if there is, I'm not aware of it. Eggman. Wonderful pass for Skilomo. Who goes for the shot after a long time dribbling with the ball? Doesn't matter, though. This didn't help. Uh, Wigberg came on for Hellstrom and uh, Anderson can come on for Nogongo, just due to the yellow card. We can get rid of that. Alright. Seriously, two, four matches to go down like this, this is really annoying. Two lapses in defense, again. Warwick. Corner. At least a corner. Vorig again. Will he take a short one? Probably not. Not a bad try though. And there's Rodriguez. Out on his own. Nobody defends him. Come on. There's the yellow card for us, our son. Our son now with the ball, Hagedal. And another long ball for Waldsund. He was offside though. Apparently he wasn't. For sale. Alp. What's this? Oh, Skillermo. <sighs> also, most of these players are French, so um, I, I go with the English pronunciation anyway. Um, not, not French, Swedish, sorry. Most of these players are Swedish, so um, that, that probably sounds a lot more like, like German most of the time. But, uh, well, for him probably not, Sapriye. And we face another corner. They have been a problem this game. Seriously, I cannot believe it. That we lose this game. Hopefully, we can win the next one against the Ulrich Waltz. Because this one... Alp. Finally somebody with a decent tackle. And it's Alp, of all people. Skilermo loses the pace. And this is another yellow. Warwick with the free kick now. Hagedal with the header. Oh, deflects. Under normal circumstances, I would be perfectly happy with this. No, you can post the links all you want. 
No big deal. I don't know why this would be a problem. Uh, I, I just uh, I just gotta finish the game first. Warwick, Skilermo, and it's offside. Oh. We had more chances. I wouldn't say we had the better chances. What's going on now? Sounds off. There it is. Skillermo. Ekman. Yeah, why? You, you can post links all you want as long as it's not trash. I mean... What's the worst that can happen? Spam? If it's spam, it's spam. Then I will deal with it. Once I have the, the time for it, but um, <laughs> there's nobody uh, that you can spam in here. It's just me and you, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Wigberg, Hagidal. Another long ball. Vorik wins the duel and uh, loses possession anyway. And this is a wonderful pass and Rodriguez will score for it. No, he does not. That was a good pass though. So, Sederberg finally earned his wage. But, uh, overall, this game will not do. We've been really unlucky though. But this, these errors and defense are costing us dearly. Ekman on a 7.4 rating. Basically perfect passing, probably. Rodriguez, Janssen, Carlson. This should be offside, though. Yes, it is. This is a really bad club that we face right now. And we gave away so many chances. Ekman, Forsell, Asarsson. Warwick, look at this. Look at the acres of space we have here. Anderson. Well, now he scores. That's a bit late, right? Maybe, <laughs> just maybe, we can get another one in one and a half minutes. I don't expect that to happen, but... Uh, that was a decent pass, and Wolzond, routine finish for him. At least uh, going forward, hopefully. Second game for him. Well done. Well done, and a decent... Uh, was with the first touch, the finish. No, oh, we face a free kick. They will, they will take the clock down. Petrovic. And now time's over. We scored a goal after all, but uh, doesn't matter. The lapses in defense uh, are too much. What the hell, guys? Okay, so that's a video. Um, I would need to watch that uh, some, some other time. Because um, um, if I watch it right now, it will be on stream. With, with all the sound and everything. So, um... That's probably not a good idea. And I, I haven't uh, configured the browser to draw it into the stream so they can, that we can watch it together. So that doesn't make sense, sorry. They are. 
in and so especially here in in, in Sweden. This is uh, they they must have adapted the, the system of the English guys who are unable to count out uh, anyway. Um, So um, this division is called First Division North, and um, there's also a First Division South, so the league is split in two. Um, but this is actually the third in Sweden. The second one is called Premier Division. No, it's called it's called First Division, I think. The second one, I think, is called First Division, and the, fir the real first is called Premier Division. In Germany, it's called Erste Bundesliga, Zweite Bundesliga, Dritte Bundesliga, and that's it. And it works just fine. No, I'm not aware just yet. Fuck. Well, okay, Haninger is not that, that worrisome. It's, it's a problem with the others. Uh, I don't think it exists. There's, um, well, the second division is probably fourth here in Sweden. I would need to look into this. Um, we've we've been there. We started there, but uh, they are um, in, in some sort of weird regional split. How did it happen? We gave away two really stupid goals, like seriously stupid. A penalty and dropping a ball in the own penalty area after a corner. How stupid can it get? Now we're sitting here with 28 points. And all of a sudden, it's on. We need to win this, especially the one against Judic Vaults, but we need to win all of them, all of a sudden, just because we didn't win last game. If we had won last game, hypothetical, if we had won last game, Urubro would be below us, and we would be in with 31 points in 10th spot, not a problem. And I mean, we won the, the direct duel against Hanninge. So, um, now next one is Judic Vaults. This is as big as it gets. If they can if they can pull themselves up to our level, we've got a problem on our hands. If we can win this, I make us favorites to stay up. At least uh, Vaults on scored his goal. Okay. I think that's it for today. I think that's enough. So um, whilst I really enjoy the save, um, that's probably enough. I also gotta upload this on YouTube to the thumbnails and so on and so forth. And I have to do some, some other stuff. Um, I will probably um, re well restart streaming tomorrow morning. Um, somewhere 9.30ish. Uh, that's GMT plus one. In case you're uh, somewhere around the world. Um, Argentina or something. So uh, yeah. You're welcome back, but that's probably at a very weird time for you. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, thanks for keeping me company, and I hope to see you again soon. Um, you'll be notified in, in case you follow, so that should work out. And uh, have a good day, have a great time, enjoy life, try to see some sun. <laughs>